weekend live show. We run down the biggest stories of the week with you every Saturday night. Let us know in the comments right now. Where are you repping? Marshfield, New Bedford, Brockton, Malden, Tucsonville, Manchester, Albuquerque, Hampton, Hampton, Hubbard, Quincy, Quincy, Hudson, Long Island, Hampton, Howling, New Hampshire, Garden City, Agawa, Mount Poison, Plymouth, Pittsburgh, Lake City, Packer, Los Angeles. We do this year, cause we're ruthless, yeah, that's some true shit. You don't wanna mess with cheddar in this country that you can't in the ambulance. You have a job, what do you do? Hey, Sam, please. Five away. Where I'm from, five away is where I'm from. You lived, I'd come five to your house, I'd sit outside, roast marshmallows right in your fucking yard. See, I'm up in the house, you <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this party started, shall we? Yo, what's up, Turtle Riders? Nine o'clock sharp. Welcome to the live show, ladies and gentlemen. I am your fearless host here. They call me Uncle Turtle Boy around these parts. You can call me. Dr. Turtle Boy, if you want, you can call me Daddy, you can call me Aiden, Clarence, doesn't really matter what you call me. I'm going to be here every Tuesday and Saturday night at 9 p.m. We do this, so make sure you have smashed that subscribe button. Hit the notification button as well, uh, the bell as well, because you never know when we're going to do an impromptu live. I did like four in the car the other day. I guess I kept losing Wi-Fi on my way home from court. That was eventful. Go watch those if you haven't seen so already. We'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the show. I finally got assaulted. Somebody finally hit me, guys. People have been saying they're going to hit me for like so many years. Someone finally hit me, and they did it on video, too. So that was not smart. So they're going to uh, fuck around, catch a charge. Let's just see it that way. And it couldn't happen to a better person. So we got a lot to get to tonight. We're going to get to that at the end. So go ahead and smash those buttons. I've shared this on the various social media pages that we run. Uh, it changes all the time, but this week, make sure you go and like our new page, guys. The Turtle Boy Daily News page has been unpublished. Uh, it had like 39,000 followers, which is the most we've had since our page with 112,000. And But it was kind of a useless page because it was completely blacklisted by Facebook. So it was completely hidden, shadow banned. So you couldn't read us if you want to anyway. No biggie. We got this new page. It's just called Turtle Boy. Just Turtle Boy. Just search it. It'll come up. Go ahead. Like We got like 3,500 followers in like 48 hours, something like that. So no biggie. It's already getting more interaction than everything. Go like Turtle Boy and everything. I'm on Twitter. I'm at Dr. Turtle Boy. I lost a shitload of followers over my thoughts on the DeMar Hamlin injury, which, by the way, I turned out to be one thousand percent correct on that one guys i don't know if you checked the score on that one the first thing that damar hamlin said when he woke up was who won he thought they should have finished the game he was expecting them to finish the game and by the way the bengals just like i predicted got fucked they got completely fucked the bengals never should have left that field they should have said to the bills i'm really sorry about the injury uh but if you leave the field we're gonna have that's gonna be a forfeit so just so you know that just so you know that but instead, they let them get on a plane and go back to Buffalo because they wanted to show compassion. And what did the Bengals get for that compassion? They got fucked in the ass. That's what happened to them. They got fucked in the ass by Roger Goodell and the NFL. He should have called up the Patriots and asked them about that. Sorry, that's what they do. That's how they do in the NFL. But they got fucked in the ass. Kansas City just won. So now they cannot possibly get close to them. They're done. They can't even hold they're, they're fucked. They're, although Joe Burrow might be more angry than never now. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, so yeah, I smacked that like so hard. I left the mark. Yikes. Yikes. Is it sex cult time already? Holy cow. Okay. Oh, and also guys, if you really want to uh, support what we're doing here at Turtle Boy, you could join Turtle Club for $15 a month. You get ad free on the website. You get a free t-shirt of your choice and you get access to the Thursday night stream. We did a true crime thing the other night about that crazy Idaho murder thing going on there. So go ahead and join that for $15 a month. It's the best way to support us because uh, we're no longer dependent on advertisers when you guys join Turtle Club because you become the customer as opposed to the advertiser becoming the customer. And then we're beholden to you and we're not beholden to people that really don't have a vested interest uh, in what we're doing here people that want to control the content that are easily influenced by outside sources and agitators and protesters and all that stuff. We don't need that. So Turtle Club is the best way to do that. Also, if you guys like uh, what we're doing here at Turtle Boy, you can go ahead and 
uh, click the link at the top there. So we, we can't use or demonetize completely uh, on YouTube. We've been for like 18 months now or something like that. We're going to be moving to Rumble. I'd like to say that first and foremost, we're going to be moving to Rumble soon. What we are waiting for at Rumble has actually arrived. So it's going to be here sooner rather than later. So you're going to want to go ahead and subscribe to our Rumble channel. I'm going to go ahead and put in the comments right now. We're streaming on the Rumble right now. You can watch it on Rumble or you can watch it over here on uh, YouTube. Basically, we were waiting on Rumble because we didn't like the live feature. They seem to have improved that a lot like the commentary feature, and it's got a situation there now where you can basically do the super chat. You can tip, do that thing. We can't do that on here because we had the wrong opinions about, I can say it now because we're demonetized, uh, it's a vaccine. We don't like the vaccine mandates. I think that's ridiculous. I think we've turned out to be 1,000% right about that because it's fucking useless. And as a result, you cannot give money to us. So we built our own function. Luckily, it's called Turtle Chat. If you click on the link at the top there of the comments section, that brings you to Turtle Chat. You can donate whatever amount of money you want. I'm going to donate five dollars to myself right here just so I can make sure it works. Five dollars. And then I go, yeah, I write my email in there. So I get the email notification. Okay. And then I do my card number. Okay, good. Got that saved. Dun, 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 CV4 number, done. Write my name in there so it comes up and you get to write a message. I will get an email notification. Hold on one second. I will get an email notification that you donated and I will bring your message up on the big screen. Oh, do we already have one? What's this one? We already have one. But they didn't write a message. So thank you, Kenneth. Kenneth has donated $5 uh, to the turtle chat. So that's how it's done, folks. Uh, so I just donated as well. So it went through. Okay, it works fine. So if you guys want to donate, that's how you can do it that way, um, et cetera. Can I join? Is Agent 21? Uh, can you join what? I'm not sure what you're asking to join, but yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm forgetting anything else here. Um, we'll get to some other stuff in a little bit. You support Turtle Boy. Glad to hear. Yeah, that's a great way to do it is by joining Turtle Club. It's actually the best way to do it. If you, A lot of people thought, that we would be down. Like I, I can't help but laugh when I see people like, Oh, uh -huh, you lost your page with 39,000. We had that, uh, chode from Revere who can't get a kidney. Um, Brian Biccio, he's, he was on our page the other day and I just let him say whatever he wants. I really don't care. And he's like, ah, you lost your page with 39,000. It's like, dude, I've lost so many pages at this point. I really don't give a shit. I don't like we had, we actually had one of our highest trafficked weeks in months on here months we had several days this week where we were well over sixty thousand, including today a week a weekend day which is very rare very rare do we have a lot of traffic on the weekends so we had some really big stories this week and we're gonna get to them in a moment so uh, i don't know if i'm forgetting anything but we could double back on that in a little bit why don't we just jump right into our first story here shall we all right so we're gonna start off with this uh story about this Army recruiter guy. He's a shade ball. There he is. Oh, at the wrong button. This is the one we want. Have I looked at Anna's Instagram? Did she post today? I have not. Yes, like I've lost to Facebook with 100,000 before. 39,000 ain't no thing. Ain't no thing, you know? Yeah, you have to verify your account and email for Rumble Chat to work. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, dude, don't worry about it. If you can't afford it, it's free, you know? I'm not trying to milk you for, for your lunch money here, you know? I get it. If you got it, you got it. It's always free. Yeah, Rumble, I mean, the thing about Rumble is most people aren't, Rumble, I feel like, is for people who have built up a, a big enough following on YouTube where they can just tell, like, I have 23,000, how many subs I got? 23,000, 22,000, something like that. And I can just tell people, like, go to Rumble. And it's a lot easier when you already have the platform to tell people to go to another platform. 
No, it has actually helped losing the page. I'm actually really happy about losing the page for once. It's like one less place where I have to check the inbox and post messages. It was actually really frustrating having that page. I'm actually glad it's gone, to be perfectly honest with you. Okay. So uh, this guy, his name is Jason Duffy. He's from Sturbridge, originally from Millville. And you can just tell everything you need to know about him by looking at him. But uh, he has been a uh, recruiter for the Army in the Central and Western Mass region in various high schools for quite some time. Do you guys have these in your high school, like Army recruiters? You know, I did. Um, And I'm starting, like, this whole story has made me wonder about them in general. Like, it's kind of weird that we just allow young men like this to just come into school and have access to teenage girls. The more I think about it, like I think about that Stoughton story involving that girl who was groomed in the, the police. What was it? The cadet program and how easy it was for those guys to have access to I don't know. I'm just kind of starting to worry about like people that, High school girls, man, some of these guys just can't keep it in their pants. I don't get it. I don't get it. It wasn't hard for me. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. You know, I was a high school teacher. I taught juniors. A lot of you guys know that at Shepherd Hill Regional High School. I did for nine years. When I first got there, I was 24 years old. So not that I was seven years older than the seniors at the time. So, you know, I still went out to the bars then. I still partied. I was barely out of college. You know, I didn't look that much older than them. And, uh, it, it you know, the, some of the other younger teachers told me, they're like, like, be very careful. Like, like, do not talk to girls alone in your room ever. Like if a girl comes over to you and is like, can I get extra help? You do it in the hallway. You know, you don't take any chances. You don't give them a chance to have a, he said, she said over some bullshit. Cause some of these bitches are crazy. Uh, we were, I was also working at a school. Uh, If you Google her, Amber Jennings was arrested there uh, a couple years prior, a smoking hot 30 year old teacher who had sex with a 15 year old student and got busted doing it. So I remember like, you know, you're the new teacher. These, these girls are used to like, you know, older teachers and then this new teachers here and he's younger and some of the senior girls, they would always try to be inappropriate. They would always try to like test you. They'd see how far they could go, you know? So do you go out on the weekends? Do you drink? Like always asking stuff like that. And I would just, I was lame. I mean, I came across as nerdy and lame to them. I'm just like, that's inappropriate. It's like, that's inappropriate. Not even like smiling about it. Not just make them feel uncomfortable. You shut it down right away. Like I'm not going to be that guy. I know there are a lot of teachers out there like that who just get off on the thrill of be like all of a sudden, like we were all in high school at one time. And most of us in high school didn't have chicks all over us, right? They don't want us. And then a lot, some of these younger teachers, they get in this environment and for the first time, attractive young girls are giving them attention and it's, they, they can't help themselves. For me, it was easy. I mean, I didn't even have a girlfriend. It was easy. I'm just like, nope, (laughs) nope, 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 nope. Cause I'm like, I know where that goes. It's inappropriate. It's inappropriate, man. It's how you catch a charge. It's how you lose your fucking job, your livelihood, everything. You throw it all down the drain for what? For what? I don't understand these people who think like that. Like, Jesus Christ, I know. I know. But I know it makes you feel good, probably. I don't get it with these guys. They can't, they, they just, I feel like it just gives them such an ego trip that like, oh, young girls, they want me. and but they only want you because of the, because they're too young to know better. Like they don't, like they'll regret it in a couple of years and then they'll look back on it and they'll say, you know, you're creepy. Yeah. 16 will get you 20. Exactly. What if they are 18? It doesn't matter if they are 18, dude, they're fucking students. If I taught it North high, they'd be 21. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, Anyway, back to this subject at hand here. So this guy is not one of those people. Uh, he 
Let's see. So for several years, uh, yesterday, a woman who graduated from Bay Path Vocational High School, her name is, uh, I don't know if I pronounce this wrong, Kaylee or Kali, Kaylee, I'm assuming, D'Souza. Uh, she graduated from Bay Path uh, Vocational in Charlton in 2021. She made a Facebook post alleging that he sexually harassed her. Let's just read it. So she, uh, a whole bunch of people sent this to us. So it says, uh, Sergeant uh, Jason Xavier Duffy from Sturbridge is a sexual predator towards children. Many girls who I will not name out of respect, including myself, have unfortunately encountered him at our high schools and fell into the predatory trap. I was the class of 2021 at Bay Path, where he was there as an army recruiter. I never spoke with him. Interesting. Never even walked up to the booth. One of my closest friends told me about him adding her on social media and saying disgusting things about his red room and showing her vile pictures of himself. The second I graduated, he added me on Instagram and began messaging me. So the red room, like what's that? Hmm. I saw you in high school, he says. I remember you. You looked like one of those kinky little girls. I just know it. He sent me nude pictures and videos of himself, sending the most repulsive messages. When I was very pregnant, he messaged me saying how bad he wanted to have sex, F you, my pregnant body. I had gotten a text from an unrecognized number and looking up the number led directly to a website that he is a big part of. I changed my phone number. He's now someone who already has his name tattooed onto her back. He's, so he's with a girl that has a name tattooed onto her back. He continues to sexually harass and violate young girls. He would send me naked pictures. And when I didn't respond, said, fine, you aren't sending any, then you don't get to keep these. Like, dude, your hog is not that special. Trust me. It ju it's just a hog. Like nobody's, ain't nothing that unique about it. Okay, pal, relax. And I think Nadia was one of the people I spoke with. Uh, he'd fish you out regardless. The worst part is this guy uh, didn't have to interact, is you didn't have to interact with them. And that's what it sounds like with this girl did. If you were somewhat attractive, you would notice. Like this girl, Callie, she never spoke to him. She never spoke to him before. But he noticed you and he remembered you. And the second you graduated, he messaged you. And sends you inappropriate shit. He asked me if I'd shaved. He said things that you'd see on an episode to catch a predator. So many of us have called and spoken to the, uh, okay. And so there he is. And just look at this douchebag. Look at him. Look at him. He writes this September 22nd. He actually writes September 14th. It's back to school time. That's what he writes in the, in the caption. It's back to school time. Like you have to be kidding me. Like, that's the creepiest thing I've ever heard. It's back. Like, look at the smile on his face. He knows what back to school time means. I'm about to pick up some digits. I'm about to pick up some Instagram handles and some Snapchats and let the fun begin. Let's see what happens. This guy's like Matthew McConaughey and dazed and confused, except he's using the army as a way to get in with these chicks. And so her post kind of goes viral. She makes another post that says, Jason Xavier Duffy. You're going to find your day in court. Justice will be shoved down your throat. I was not by any means the worst case when it comes to you. I was one of many girls who also suffered to your narcissistic manipulative ways. I can only imagine how you treat your younger female relatives. <laughs> if any of them keep a little secret with you like we did. I believe I speak for all the girls that fell victim to your praying. When I say you will not silence us, no matter how hard you try I will not take these posts down. So she's pulling a Rose McGowan here on our local Harvey Weinstein appears. And the, the her, her original post got hundreds of shares. Now, notice she didn't post any like direct evidence of any of this. And so I'm skeptical of this shit at first because you know me, I'm an evidence guy, I like evidence. But there is something about numbers. There is something about like when dozens of girls start sharing it. And they're all around the same age and they all recently graduated from area high schools and they know him and they all have similar stories that becomes some, that's evidence in and of itself. Well, eyewitness testimony. Like they all can't be lying. Not all of them. I can, maybe one, you could say that like, whatever he said, she said, they all can't be lying. 
And especially when they're telling similar stories like this. And hundreds of people shared this. Hundreds of people. And I ended up talking with them. And to me, it was even more confirmed by my conversation with him, with him which we're going to go over shortly. So, this girl, God bless her, she seems really determined to get this out there. And I'm happy that she did because a lot of people came forward. Kaylee was determined uh, to expose him because she was disgusted with the way he treated not only her, but her friends. So she did not message with him in high school, but she claims friends of hers did. She had no interaction with him in high school. So it's even weirder that he starts reaching out to her. But he did have allegedly uh, contact with girls when they were in high school. So she's doing this not to protect herself, because she doesn't really consider herself that much of a victim in this because she never had sex with him. Um, she basically was looking to out him the whole time. And she realized what, like her, basically all the things that she was told about him were kind of confirmed with the sexting that occurred afterwards. Unwanted sexting. The guy's just sending images of his hog and he's like taking him back. He's like, no, 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 no more hog for you. No more hog to you. Now he's saying, um, if you talk to him the way he's trying to defend himself, what's it, it, you'll see. Exactly. Exactly. Now he says he, he, he want he wants to come on and, and you know me, I let anybody who wants to come on, come on and say their piece. Anyone. This is a, a an open space, an open platform. It's not fair to write about people and not give them a chance to face you. I believe that. So he's welcome up here. Uh, I guess it conflicted with his schedule tonight. So he says he's willing to come on Tuesday. So we will see if he stands by his word. If I was a betting man, I bet he doesn't come. I bet he doesn't come. Nothing is more annoying than a random dick on your screen. So you know you know the dick pic etiquette around these parts. We've been over this before. Like dick pics are okay if they're solicited. Like that's the thing with the dick pics. You can't just you can't just send your guys. You can't just send your hog out to everyone. You can't do it, and just see it's not fishing. You can't just throw it out there and see if there's some biters. You like it has to be it has to be 100 percent going in. You know, yeah, it has to be like you know, it's welcomed. That's it. Like you should you should ask first. Like you should ask permission. Pro tip: Don't do anything because they will screenshot it. Just understand that every chick that you send an unsolicited dick pic to, it gets screenshotted. That's just science, period. And Snapchat, don't matter. A lot of these guys use Snapchat and they think, oh, they can't catch me now. Bitch has got two phones, man. They got two phones. They just take a picture with their other phone, okay? Yeah, just pull those on Tinder, bro. Like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And why do you want girls this young? Like, it's weird. It's weird, you know? Anyway. <clears throat> um. So... He later says to me, when I talk to him, he goes, I don't use Snapchat. Well, sir, what is this about then? This is an Instagram message that he sent a girl. And he says, you should add my Snap. So I guess he does have Snapchat. And he guess he does use it. So, Kaylee admitted, admittedly was trying to bait him. And see if he would get real sexual with her. Because he deletes his messages a lot. That's how he does. On Instagram, he knows Instagram doesn't disappear. You got to delete them. Snapchat will disappear on its own. So she goes, um, so, you know, so many girls have been abused and I'm about to let them say, uh, see, she came after me. Edit, uh, he, his deleted messages was him saying, please come over, begging me. And I don't give free attention was him saying he wasn't going to talk to me unless I send him nudes. So this is her saying, good morning. Not even going to say happy birthday. He goes, I don't give free attention. That's so douchey right there. I don't give, even if it's, she's saying that's code for, I don't send nudes unless I get nudes. But then he, he sends something here. He takes it back. She, she claims that this is where he solicited sex from her. And he's, and she's like, I cannot. Now she, she was admittedly flirting with him on here. She claims she was trying to bait him into like, saying inappropriate things. So she says, tell me I'm your pretty girl. And then he goes, you aren't yet. I don't give out free attention. You haven't even made it to side chick yet. Okay. Okay. So she gets all these messages from people though. Uh, let's read some of these. 
I seen your post about Duffy. When we were in high school, I literally got brought into the dean's office over him because he was trying to DM me. Well, I was literally a sophomore in high school. Interesting. Paige says, <coughs> he shouldn't be allowed within 500 feet of a school. Not only did he do this at Bay Path, but North Brookfield as well until he got kicked out. Uh, the fact that this guy tried messaging me, Marissa says, when I was a freshman in high school, convincing me to join. No fucking way. He was always trying to get me to meet up with him alone and talk about the army. He made comments about my body looking really fit and everything. It's That's why the, the recruiter thing's a little bit creepy because they can't. Let me see you do 10 pushups, girl. Like, why, why are we allowing these strange men in our school? Why? Like, I understand they're in the army. We're supposed to trust them. But like, just because you're in the army doesn't mean I have to trust you. Sorry. Around my daughter. Nope. 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 Uh, he, she says he used to be at Tentasqua, always pulling shit like this. They didn't do anything about it. He'd be recruiting a pathfinder thing that's in Deerfield. He said some weird shit to me, especially when I did the pushups. So many of my friends who were underage were harassed by this man at Tentasqua. I don't understand. Nothing's been done. This is crazy. He was the reason I never joined the army because of how creepy he was towards me. Blocked him right after our interview. Uh, he did this not only at Bay Path, but at Palmer and Pathfinder as well. Uh, and there I am getting tagged. Uh, reported him years ago and his commander said he's been kicked out of multiple schools. Um, Lily says the amount of time this guy would add me on social media and try to talk to me when I was in high school. So many of my own friends <coughs> have told me about their interactions with this guy and it pisses me off. He was simply fired from our school and nothing more. Disgusting. Um, and hundred percent facts. So yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. Then we got another message from a girl who graduated in 2018. This one was alarming. I'll read this one to you. Uh, she, she just wanted to be Caitlin was her name. She didn't want her last name listed. She says in November of 2018, I was just barely 17 when he picked me up from my friend's house, which is just weird. Like no. And took me to his house. I said yes to go into his house there. He sexually assaulted me. After saying no multiple times, <clears throat> he then sent me home in an Uber at 2 a.m. He would save pictures of me that I sent to him and threaten me with them. When I confronted him years ago, he acted like it never happened. It kills me knowing the military will protect him, and he's been doing this for years now. I wish I had more proof to give, but I didn't save anything from back then. So because he uses Snap, and, and that's the thing, a lot of the girls we spoke to had the same story was that it was years ago, four or five years ago, and I didn't save it because of the power dynamic. I didn't think anything would happen. Like this guy's in the army. Like a lot of people were scared to do it. So this is what this one girl says. Um, this is from a, a girl at Tentasqua in Sturbridge. <coughs> she, uh, again, this is, you can't screenshot on Snapchat or it will alert the person. So you, but you could take a picture of the phone. It's so stupid. I don't, I don't get Snapchat, but, uh, so this is him. It says Jason Duffy at the top. And he's saying, I have a whole room for it. You are young. You have no clue. She goes, you have no idea who I am or what I've done, babe. I won't only be choking you until you are blue in the face. Okay. While spitting in your mouth, while toys are inside of you tied up. She was still in high school, she says, when she posted that. In another message, he goes, you won't want to pass this up before you go to college. Well, maybe you will. Every guy in college will bore you after if you do. Like, he's so good in bed. Like, these guys, they convince themselves that, like, oh, my dick is just so special. Like, it's so unique. It has a nice bend to it. The tip just fits in really well. It just finds the G it's got a, it's got, it's like a magnet with the G spot. It just does one like their your dick's not that special. It's just a dick. Okay. They're all dicks. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, these guys, it just, they get so arrogant about it as if every guy doesn't bore me already. She says, yikes. Uh, it will get way worse then. I doubt it. You will be spending a lot of money on gas coming here as much as you can. Yeah. Your dick is fucking awesome, dude. We get it. It's so cool. Anyway. Um, so I public I after we publish this, we get a bunch of messages. And I did this blog today on it. 
And I got first. I got a, a message from a representative of the United States Army, who wanted to make it clear in his message to me that his ass got fired over this. He does. He does not. He has not worked in the schools in two years because so many girls reported him, and they investigated him, and they found these reports credible under whatever system they're using. He was found guilty, and he was discharged from the army. He's no longer in the army. As of a couple months ago, he lost his veterans benefits um, and they're done with him. So I'm glad to hear that was done. But what these girls are describing is criminal and should be investigated by the police, by the police. I certainly hope any principals or administrators who had this brought to their attention alerted the police. I would hope so. But. Um, so we, we started getting more similar stories. So let's read some of these that I've gotten since the first blog. When I was 17, Jason Duffy tried to recruit me into the army. He then added me on Snapchat and began telling me how he wanted me in gym class playing basketball. And I was a sight to see at first. I didn't think much of it. I was a young, naive girl. I was getting attention from an attractive older man in the service, <coughs> the power dynamic. It began escalating quickly. And again, this guy's uh, for the teachers out there that think they're hot shit and like girls. Like, I understand right now it seems like all oh, these girls want you, and they think like three or four years from now they're going to mature, and they're going to look back at that, and they're going to be like, then they're going to realize what a creep you are. They don't realize it at the time because they're seventeen and they're dumb, but when they turn twenty three, they're going to look back on it and they're going to realize what a creep you are, and you're still doing your job. And guess what? They're going to put you on blast. And it's not going to be fun. You don't want to be that guy. You can only do this for so long. It began escalating quickly. Within a week of first seeing him at my school, I saw him about two or three times before he got kicked out. He was asking me to meet up with him, asking me to send pictures of myself, telling me about how much fun he is. I never spoke up. Being a man in the army and using your privilege and power to prey on young girls is probably the most disgusting thing I've experienced since I've spoken up about this and shared information on social media, I've had about a dozen girls come forward with their experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's another one. Jason did the same thing with me. <clears throat> you can tell I'm talking to young people because all the messages are on Instagram. Jason did the same thing with me, was talking to a kid he recruited who was working under him at the time the Sturbridge Army office would message me on Snap saying, why would you want this person? He's younger. Wouldn't you want an older man like me? Now, this is what I mean by consistent. This message right here that this girl's saying she got, she obviously doesn't have because on Snapchat, is consistent with that other message in which he's telling her, like, the guys in college can't fuck you like I can. I'm like, they're inexperienced 19 year old boys. I'm a 29 year old man. My, I have a magical cock. You understand that? I'm going to tie you up and spit in your mouth. We're going to do some crazy shit. And that's consistent with what this girl is saying. That's what makes it more believable. That's what makes it more believable. So I was probably 17 or 18. He was about as old as my dad. This was six or seven years ago. Unfortunately, no proof was on Snapchat. Victim number three. Hey, I was the girl Jason Duffy invited to his red room. <laughs> red, like red room? I was 16. I don't have concrete proof, but I'm willing to tell my story and make a statement if you'd like. So she does. I met him as a recruiting office in Sturbridge because at the time I was thinking about joining the military. I brought my friend with me. Thank God. Who knows what else he would have set it up. He kept commenting on my body and how small I was, but I didn't think much of it at the time. Seemed like a nice guy. He walked, walked us out and I jokingly said, Hey, my sister's in the army and she's single. He asked how old she was. I said, 22. He said, that's way too old for him and winked at me. What? Ugh. And then went back inside. Later, he added me on Snapchat. And it would swipe up on all my stories. I don't know what that means. I don't do Snapchat. But the fact that you're adding high school, like you're using your position to add anyone on social media, it's inappropriate. Inappropriate. It would be If it's inappropriate for a teacher to add students, then it's inappropriate for anyone who comes in the building too. That includes janitors. That includes... Uh, the kitchen staff, the librarian, 
and army recruiters too. The school resource officer, it's inappropriate for all of them. Then the flirting started. And he asked me not to tell anyone, of course, but all my friends knew. He asked me to come sleep over his house. We could share his bed and have fun in his red room, he called it. I was 16. He tried so hard to convince me to send him nude pictures, but I never did. <coughs> he ended up sending me a video on Snapchat in his bathroom mirror of his privates. When I didn't send any back, he blocked me. Talk about fishing. He just sends them out and it's just like if they don't respond back, he blocks you so you can't get a picture of it. Fifty shades of pedophilia, so true. Uh, I told our I told my sis I blocked him out of embarrassment. I told my sister and she reported him, but nothing happened. So this is the sister of that girl says, um, I called about four years ago. Um, my sister wasn't comfortable reporting him. So I asked her permission if I could. I've witnessed him talking to her on Snapchat when she was underage. He sent a picture of his dick to her. So he called his commander. His commander initially told me that they were aware of him creeping out high school girls and told me he had been banned from multiple schools. When they got back to me with the result, they said there was nothing they could do. Since it was on Snapchat, all the messages disappeared and she never took a screenshot of his dick in fear that he would be mad at her. But he talked to her on Snapchat a lot, flirting and even made a joke that she has an older sister. Oh, so she's the older sister. Okay. Here's another girl. I always had a bad feeling about it. He tried to do that shit with me. There was a time when he had me on socials. Felt weird being 17 with a grown adult man in my business. So happy people are speaking up and I hope for justice. <laughs> another victim. I went to North Brookfield. Just turned 17. I was in gym class. He came out to go to lunch. That's when Jason Duffy came up to me and started asking questions about joining the military. I was considering it. He gave me his gram. He gave me his Instagram to reach out with questions. That right there is inappropriate. Like, give him your card, have a business number, not your Instagram, where you post weird pictures of yourself, like looking suave and shit. Like, who do you think you are, dude? Like, do, who, who does this guy think he is? You're not that, you're not special. There's a reason you're going after girls this young is because girls who are older know better. They know a creep when they see one. And you can't get girls that age. So that's why you go for the younger ones. Like, I don't, I, there is something creepy. I know it's legal for men. Like even Dave Portnoy does it. And I think that's creepy too. Like these guys who just, like Dave Portnoy could have any woman he wants. He's rich and famous. And you could have any 30 year old girl you want. And he goes for 19 year olds. Like that's, that's weird. I'm sorry. That's weird. Like, what do you talk to them about? Like you can find hot, there are plenty of hot 30 year olds out there. They're more likely to have fake tits too. Fun fact. You can have a lot more fun probably with the 30 year old than you can with a 19 year old. There's more to talk about. Like, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Um, that night I got direct message from him telling me to add him on Snapchat. That's when he told me that I was a sight to see in gym class and I was very athletic. I didn't think much of it. And then he started to ask me about what town I live in. What town? You live in North Brookfield. You're at North Brookfield High. What? Um, if I wanted to meet up, I didn't have my license yet. I started to enjoy it because I was a young, naive girl. I saw him at my school maybe two or three more times after that. I wish I had more proof of what he said to me, but I had to block him on social media to get him away from me. I told my friends what was going on. They all thought I was wrong. I didn't at the time. But see, all these girls come out with their stories really inspired me to speak up. So thank you, Callie. This is what I mean. You got the me too thing happening here. And now that I'm 21, I realize that I, it was not okay. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's like, eventually these girls get older and they become wiser and they look back at it and they didn't forget what happens. They don't forget this about that creepy guy. I posted about it on my gram, which he then slid up responding to me, basically blackmailing me. I thought I had him blocked, but I guess I didn't, at least on Instagram. That's when he said to me yesterday about speaking up. I don't know. Oh, I guess I didn't put that image in. Yeah. So victim six says this. This is a creepy one. I really do not want him contacting me ever again, but I was involved with Jason briefly last year. He left army recruiting in 2020 after the pandemic started. He now works for the corporate office, a distribution company of UNFI. So he works at some, whatever that is. He's still a creep there and used to brag to me about how when the female workers 
would fail their drug tests, he would let them suck his dick to get rid of their positive drug screen. Now, who knows if that's true or him just bragging about it. Either way, he's a scumbag if he said that. He also used to have a private Instagram account where he would post pictures including nudes of the girls that he fucked. Awesome. I'm not sure if you saw his recent Instagram post from a few days ago, but the 19-year-old he's currently fucking, even though he's 30, got a tramp stamp of his name above her ass. I can't. He's absolutely horrible. Something needs to be done. Dude, the girl, she is going to regret that so bad. She got a barcode with Jason Duffy's name on it. He, that so he presumably so he can shoot his his load on there toss a toss a couple um teaspoons of baby batter on there and it's like prop like that's a control thing like you're my property that's weird that's weird um anyway so i messaged the guy i messaged him and i want to know why one of his messages um so he believes that, so let me just read this. There are more in our inbox that keep coming. Meanwhile, Jason also reached out to us to share his side of the story. He sent me a bunch of messages. I had already posted of his conversations with high school girls on social media. He believes that they prove he was not the aggressor, but he shouldn't be talking with high school girls on social media in the first place. I wanted to know why one of his messages. So he basically sends me all the messages that I've already posted on the blog. I'm like, yeah, dude, I've seen all that. I wrote about it. Yeah, not I get it. And but he goes, he didn't see anything wrong with that. I go, why does this post here say unavailable? Because remember that girl sent him a message and one of them said unavailable. I go, why does it say unavailable? And he goes, I'm not really sure. It's nothing I deleted. Um well you deleted it. This one right here. Post unavailable. Why does it say that? Doesn't have an answer. And again, that's where she said that. He invited her for sex. Okay. I then asked him why he messaged high school girls on social media instead of emailing or speaking with their parents. He claimed that they always messaged him first. He goes, I don't start the conversation. But according to Callie, he messages them and then he deletes the first message, which is so many girls have said that, by the way. So many girls have said that. But according to that woman, he deletes messages. So she screenshotted her notifications where he says, fucking your tight holes. You have no idea how hard I am while thinking about you. It's got the same avatar of him and his dad. So that looks legit. So he, tell, he told me it's okay for him to use social media. Like, let's read this. I, I can't, like this conversation right here, I just want to laugh. Like, this is too funny. <laughs> I go, why I go, why are you messaging high school girls at all? Do you think that's appropriate? And he says, well, when you are a military recruiter, you get a list of names from every school to contact. But Callie wasn't on your list. And some of these other girls weren't on your list. So you get a list of girls to contact. Okay, cool. So you have their phone number. So you just call them on that. Not text or just call. You need to contact every single one of those names by either phone, text, social media. Social media? Is that the policy of the United States Army? Social media? Message high school girls on social media? We started using social media as a way to contact them. <coughs> Never from a personal account where they contacted, except you did use your personal account. And now this, now this is the douchiest comment ever. I became big and went viral on social media. And it was my easiest way to get the mission done. The mission? What is your mission, son? To slay high school girl? Mission? That's what you just called it? And you became viral and big and viral? What does that mean? I've never heard of you before. I don't think you went that big and viral. So you had to message these girls on... I mean, talk about cocky. Talk about cocky. Oh, yeah, I'm big and viral. Lots of parents called saying, why are grown men messaging our kids? Yeah, stop right there. That's how you should have known when you're a scumbag. When you got parents calling the school, ask, asking you to stop messaging their daughters. Yeah, might be a problem. 
But we had to get in contact with each one of them. No, you didn't. You had no obligation to message them on Snapchat. None. I believe it's something to do. Dude, I laughed so hard. I can't. Did you guys see this? I cannot believe you said this. I believe it has something to do with the No Child Left Behind Act. He actually said that. The no, I had to message your daughter on Snapchat. Guys, he had to message your daughter on Snapchat and send a dick pic. Why? No child left behind. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? What does that mean? No child left... No dick left behind? Is that what you're saying? You're, you left a lot of dicks behind. You're, you're trying to get behind a lot of children, son. That's creepy. That is so creepy. Oh. Anyway, I don't exactly remember as I haven't been a recruiter in a long time. And then I'm like, what about Snapchat? He goes, nope. Never use Snapchat to contact a student. Never. The Snapchat in your post, he says, was submitted to the police in Sturbridge and the Army. Is that supposed to make you sound better? It wasn't my Snapchat. I mean, he's just pulling a shaggy here. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. What? And the beauty of Snapchat is I guess we can't prove it. It's like you can go click on the message. That's why you got to stay off. Dude, tell your kids to stay off of Snapchat and TikTok. <coughs> I know I sound like an old man saying that, but like they're predatory. Those two apps are predatory. They're, they're designed for creepy men to prey on young women with no consequences. That's what these apps are used for. And like, I know young girls, oh, you boomers, you don't really know what you talk about. It's like, yeah, motherfucker, you're the one getting sexually harassed though. You're the one with these creepy dudes in your inbox and now you're putting them on blast, but you still got sexually harassed. So maybe you should listen to us elders because we know it, we're not fucking stupid, you know? Don't use Snapchat. It's fucking retarded, okay? Snapchat is the stupidest fucking platform to ever exist. It has no function, no use whatsoever. Tell me, can anybody explain to me out there what the fuck is the point of Snapchat? And I'm so, I'm so sick of telling people, tell me, join Snapchat. Bitch, what the fuck do I want to join Snapchat for? Tell me, can some make the case for me right now why the fuck I should want to use Snapchat? What does it do? That I would want to do it for. It, besides the fact to get away from boomers. I get that. You don't want to go on Facebook. The boomers are there. Why would I want to be on Snapchat? Tell me. I mean, I, I don't like what, what what's the point of it? It disappears. Like, like people can't take a picture of their phone. What's the point? What's the point? Tell your kids to get off of Snapchat. Never. There will be no Snapchat in my house ever. Because it's just shady. The fact that the things disappear is the shadiest thing. It is, it, it is an app designed to be shady. Why would you want to encourage your kids to be shady? It's weird. It's weird. But I digress. With TikTok, even worse. TikTok's even worse because it's literally made by the Chinese Communist Party. And young kids don't know how evil the Chinese Communist Party is. It's literally spyware. And I told my daughter that. She's at the age now. She wants to start getting a phone. Friends start getting a phone. Eventually, we're going to have to get her one. And I'm like, there will be no TikTok in this house. Just understand that. There will be no TikTok app on your phone ever. And she's like, why? I'm like, because the Chinese will spy on you. And she's like, what? They will? Yeah. They're going to spy on you. They're going to see you in the shower. That's what I tell you. You're going to see you in there. They're going to watch. Every They're like Santa Claus. They're going to watch everything you do. Chairman Z, yeah, he's going to be watching you. How do you feel about that? You like that? Is it worth the little six-second dance video? The Chinese are going to watch you? Do you feel safe? No. So, yeah, you can call me Boomer. You can call me what you want. But my daughter, and, and you're an irresponsible. If you are a parent that lets your kid go on TikTok and lets your kid go on Snapchat, you're a shitty parent. I'm just going to say it right now. You're a shitty parent. Don't let your kids on Snap Snapchat or TikTok. Fight me. I'm right. You're wrong. I was right about the Bengals. I'm right about this. Blow me. Anyway, back to the story at hand here. So uh, there's this message, and I ask him about this weird sexual message. He goes, that was not me. The Snapchat in your post, that, that was not me. I'm like, oh, oh, right. You're he goes, there was a fake account. It wasn't my Snapchat. Somebody just makes fake accounts of me. I don't have a Snapchat. But yet here you are telling a girl to add you on Snapchat. So I guess you do. 
I guess you do. So he's like, I'm basically, I'm so famous that people make all these fake accounts for me. And uh, first of all, some of these girls look like bots. Feng, Feng Ling Lang is telling him what? Lay Luzend is telling him about what? Okay, so that, that just the whole thing sounds shady. The whole thing sounds shady. So <coughs> I am getting a message here. I want to read real quick. So um, Callie was going to come on, but then she got cold feet. I guess the police told her, like, I shouldn't even say anything, but um, she got cold feet. I would wreck. She's more than welcome to come up if she wants to um, or anybody else who's been victimized by them. I just want to throw this out there. There's a real message from a military recruiter and what they're supposed to do if they message us through Instagram. So this is uh, a message and another recruiter sends. I'm Sergeant First Class Blank. I'm reaching out to see if you have any thought about serving in the army. We can help pay for college and trade programs and help you gain job experience. We have over 150 different jobs for medical. Okay, that's fine. I guess if you're using Instagram for that purpose, that's fine. But nothing personal. There can be nothing personal on it, period. Nothing. Anyway, um, so he's busy. Uh, he is more than welcome to come on on Tuesday. Uh, I, I'm willing to hear his side of the story. Uh, I hope he understands that he's going to have to bring facts. And I'm not an easy interview. I'm fair, but I'm not easy. I'm not easy. So there's that. Okay. Um, I mean, good good mother right here, Lex. Says, I, I have a 12-year-old daughter who thinks I'm the worst because I won't allow her to have social media or TikTok. I mean, I might let my kid have a Twitter. or But I would monitor the shit out of that, you know? I would monitor who you're following. Um, but because social media has a useful function. You can learn, like you can learn a lot on Twitter, believe it or not. It's like YouTube. You can, YouTube can be really good, really good. There's a lot of things that you can learn on YouTube. My son's on YouTube now and he just uses it for educational shit. Wants to watch mystery, Doug, whoever that is. And it's great. Twitter does a lot of porn, which is a little bit dangerous, but uh, he is welcome to come up here anytime. I have a feeling after tonight's episode and the blogs, he's going to back out. I have a feeling he's going to back out. Just my, just, just a gut feeling. But um, he's welcome to come up here and explain to the class why he's doing what he's doing. So there's that. Okay. Um, why don't we um, do a thing here? Uh, we, we like to start off every episode or start off in the middle of it. Do a little thing called where are you repping? Let us know in the comments, where are you watching the turtle boy live show from tonight? Go ahead. All right, we're about to get a whole bunch of answers here. Okay. West Tisbury's in the house. Tucson's here. West Quincy, Nashville's in the house. Um, Naples here, Nashua, Dump Trucks, Bus Stop, Canton, Braintree, Clinton, North Bergen, New Jersey, Walpole, Nashua, Mashpee, Mike Giannetti's Jail Cell, Springfield, Missouri. That's a new one. Framingham, uh, Manchog, Hanson, Andrew Johnson's Chin with No Hair, <laughs> Providence, uh, near Providence College. Excellent. Holyoke, Jason Duffy's Red Room. <laughs> Matt of Poison, Brett's House of Toothless Horrors. Yikes. Moose Up, Connecticut. My VPN says different. Malden's in the house. Jason Duffy's Army Dungeon. Yikes. Quincy in the house. Your mom's house. Yikes. Uh, Aruba. Nice. Uh, Watertown. Townsend. Blurred Lines. Mom's house. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Lowell. The car. Dump Trucks. Caboose. Lowell's in the house. Skituit's in the house. Not quite Cohasset. Little Andy's Dealer's House. We're going to get to that. Lewiston, Maine, 130 Blake Street, being treated like an ashtray. Ugh. On my waterbed. Somerville's in the house. Okay. So if I missed anyone, I still love you. Wes Newberry's here. We have a couple. Um, Palmer's here. Brett's Lure Shop's here. <laughs> Jason Duffy's Car Trunk is here. Got a couple donos I want to bring up real quick before we move on to the next topic. Um... Let's let's see. Share screen. A couple of donos here. First one up, we have um, Guitar Center Warwick is uh, sends us a dono, and he says, 
Rob Keenan, it's $25. Rob Keenan, you better never set foot in our store again. <laughs> what? This is awesome. Okay, I got to read this. Rob, this is from uh, Guitar Center in Warwick. You better never set foot in our store again. After you fucked up our plumbing, we had no water for two days. The main shutoff valve wouldn't go back on after it turned off. We will kick your ass if you show up again. You should have blown up the bathroom at TJ Maxx, Rob Keenan. That, now that is a good turtle chat, folks. If you want it, like, this is what you should use turtle chat for. Call out your enemies. If you give me money, you can call out anyone you want, and we'll put it up on the big screen. So thank you. Thank you there, uh, Guitar Center Warwick. And get your act together, Rob Keenan. Another one. $10 from Stallhammer. Andrew Charles, you are forever banned from singing Joe Walsh when we do karaoke. I don't get it, but that's your that's cool. Thank you. $10. I appreciate that. Next one up. $10 from Courtney. Says, Blue Cheese is almost as vile as Andrew Johnson's weird beard with the bear chain. We, we're going to get to Andrew Johnson. Now, you might have noticed, guys, we have a whole... Uh, we have an uh, upcoming live show on Monday, a special episode. We don't usually do shows on Monday called Who is Andrew Johnson? We're going to get to a preview of that at the end of the year. I have done some research on this individual. He is horrifying. He is an animal. He's an absolute animal. And it, this is like the, we're going to, you're going to see. Thank you very much. Uh, and by the blue cheese sucks, except on Buffalo chicken. Uh, Kenneth sends $5 and says, good luck, turtle boy. I love your sports stories. The Bengal, Duke volleyball stories. Notre Dame, though, yeah, they had a tough season. Go Irish. We'll be back. We got a new quarterback next year from Wake Forest. He looks pretty good. But, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I'm definitely rooting. If the Patriots don't win, I want the Bengals to win. I am officially with the Bengals now. Okay. DW sends 25. He says, go on, go. Glad you recovered from yesterday. Uh, CP's vicious husband, KP's uh, crest man is vicious husband, has a tremendous chin strap of a beard. Very stylish and sends $25. So thank you very much, DW. And another one here from DW. Oh, same thing. Okay, cool. So thank you guys for those. If anyone else would like to donate, again, you can click on the link at the top. You can donate whatever amount of money that you want. And uh, you get to write a little message like that. I'll bring it up on my end. And that's how you support the kind of journalism we do. Because who else is calling out creepy, weird dudes at the, uh, you know, harassing your daughters uh, under the guise of being an arm recruiter. Who else is doing that? Nobody else is doing that except for me. Also, who else is doing the next story that we're going to do about shady city councilors from Boston who act inappropriate with their children? Let's jump to that one. Okay, let me bring it up over here. Oh, yeah. So I see 73 liked, 230 watching live. Guys, give us a thumbs up if you don't mind. That really helps with the algos. We really appreciate that. Also, if you could leave a comment afterwards, those really help as well. Um, yeah, Andy knows he's going to steal the story from me next week, probably. Okay. Um, so let's talk about this story. So we've talked about Kendra Lara before. She's a progressive city councilor from the city of Boston. Um, she has proposed legislation that it would have ex-cons, uh, replace Boston police officers doing training. She basically, her platform on running for city council was fuck the police. She is from a far, she represents the far left of the democratic party who wants to defund the police. Um, you know, green new deal, all that stuff. She's young. She's a strong woman of color who will constantly let you know that she's marginalized and kind of hides behind that. She nearly started a riot at a city council meeting in defense of her colleague, Ricardo Arroyo, after multiple women credibly accused him of rape. She stood by him anyway. She uh, lied about, she claimed that she was called the N-word in emails every day. So we did a public request, records request for all of her emails. Never happened once. She completely made it up and she just ignores it. We also found out that she's living in housing in Jamaica Plain, that is subsidized public housing that she no longer qualifies for because of her city council salary. And she's taking up spots from poor people. So that's the kind of person that she is. 
abolish the police, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, I mean, this is what we get. This is what you get where. So I had heard for quite some time now that this woman may or may not have a sex tape out there. Now, you know how I feel about sex tapes. You know how I feel about sex tapes. Not a fan. Not a fan of revenge porn, even though this is one of two states in the country where revenge porn is completely legal for some reason. Um, and as you know, if you're new here, I am somewhat of a, it's not somewhat, I am a victim of not having a revenge porn lock because I had some of mine sent out there. And it's for the world to see. And a lot of people have seen it and it sucked at first. But guess what? I got that extra emoji energy going on and I'm over it. Okay. I dominated it. And quite frankly, it was good free advertising. So thank you. Krusty panties that actually backfired on you again. You can't say someone has a small Johnson if you throw their, you know, their videos out there and the proof is in the pudding and it requires five emojis to cover it up. You know, receipts don't lie. Receipts don't lie. So, um, but we're Kendra Lyra, it's low. So I, I hear she's got a sex tape. So I have no interest in the sex tape. But what I heard about this, right? was that there was a child involved. And that's what made it get to my, I'm like, a child's involved, what? And a busted public school teacher, what? They're in the video? Okay. And so uh, I'm going to cut this off at a certain point. But what you're about to see here, if you haven't seen this already, um, we have a, oh, thank you, Carrie. That's very kind of you. Um, we have a, a, a Boston public school teacher videoing here he is right after he banged her and listen to what he says yo what's up yo i'm just chilling definitely just want to catch in the ass it was crazy yeah he goes i definitely just fucked kendra in the ass it was crazy okay so right away guys i'm looking at that and it's like dude have you ever had sex before like who I remember, it's like that's like the sex version of I remember my first beer. Like you get on there and you're just like, oh, I just fucked Kendra in the ass. Why? Why would you ever feel the need to talk about that? So you fucked her in the ass. Congratulations. You think you're the first person to ever stick it in the poop shoot? You want a trophy, son? Do you feel good about yourself? You stuck it in there. Good job. And listen to what she says in the background. Listen to this. Accidentally, she says, how do you accidentally fuck someone in the ass? Like what? Just it sounds like rape. Sounds like rape. It's like, oh, I didn't, it was just accidentally I had sex with you, but he accidentally had sex with her in the, the bunghole. And then he shifts the camera over and there she is. Okay. And she is tending <coughs> to a child with no pants on. Now, there's no, you don't see any genitals there, so I guess you could show it. But I did just, I mean, you don't see any genitals, but just in case, like, that is a child's hand right there. And she's, like, doing his hair or something. This is a special needs kid, too. And... Yeah, it's like, let's like grow up, seriously. Um, she might have a thong on. I guess so. I guess you could make that argument that she might have a thong on. But the real problem here is that you just said in front of a five-year-old, I fucked your mom in the ass. And this woman is not some ratchet. Like, well, she is ratchet. And she will be in Ratchet Madness, as will her colleague, Tanya Fernandez-Anderson, as will Julia Mejia. They'll all be in Ratchet Madness. But, like, you're a city councilor. You're supposed to be, like, a leader, dignified. You're running one of the most important cities in the country. You're in charge of policy here. You ran against a woman who was very qualified in West Roxbury, Jamaica Plain, your neighborhood, and you beat her on a progressive ticket. And this is, you're not a grown up. You're talking, you're in videos going, we fucked your ass. And yes, and you're right, Christine. 
the only reason we know he's special needs is the fact that she constantly points it out. She's hid behind that before. She uses that as a way to avoid the eviction too. Exactly. You can, I mean, that's a good point. Like my mama never like did this to me with no pants on. You can, even if she got a thong on, you can't put a pair of pants on. What is happening right now? Like, what is, how is that kosher? Putting that on. So I, uh, I mean, someone needs to call DCF on this bitch. Cause that's not appropriate. Now this guy, this guy is, uh, a, his name is Owen Thomas. He's a teacher at the Boston day and evening Academy in Roxbury. It's an alternative school for kids who have dropped out of school. Um, so basically it's like where I used to teach at Fanning and Worcester. <coughs> he teaches restorative justice in critical race theory. And at his previous job, he taught cultural re relevance for students of color. Now, the funniest part about this is, so he's basically, that's how he has a job is because he says the right buzzwords. And if you say words like that, if you talk about restorative justice, do you understand how wet that makes Kendra Lara? She's like, oh my God, restorative justice. Oh well, yeah. Let me go click the mouse. Double click the mouse. Yeah. Ooh, restorative justice. Ooh, green new deal. Oh, mm. Mm. Mm, green new deal. Oh, it just does it for her. It just does it for her. He knows, he knows the right words to say. So he gets it done. And so she's got all these ironically, uh, tweets up about the day school and all this shit. Like, like talking about cops abusing family members, how mission Sc Hill school is bad. Cause there was sexual abuse going on there. How ICE is bad because they do bad things to children. Uh, trans children are under attack. Oh yeah, sure thing. Sure thing. Environmental racism is hurting black children. Whatever the fuck that means. Gentrification and displacement are still rampant. Uh, by the way, gentrification is code for white people are moving in. So she's like, white people are moving in. That's a problem. We can't have too many white people. Replacement theory. As a community, you ever notice that it's only bad to talk about movement of people when they are particular members of one race? Interesting. We don't care enough about other people's children. I do, Kendra. And I do weep for your children. She goes, the emperor has no clothes. Well, neither do you. At least the emperor had some pants somewhere. You ain't got no pants on. So... That's Kendra Lara. We have not heard. Now, normally the Boston Globe would be all over a story like this. Imagine if this was a man. Imagine if this was Ed Flynn or somebody like that on the Boston City Council. Or a Republican. Or Rayla Campbell. Somebody like that. They would be all over this. But she's on the right political team. I know the Globe is aware of this. That blog got 30,000 views. That blog was widely shared and tagged the Boston Globe in it. They saw it. Of course they saw it, but just like what Monica can grant, they're covering it up. And I told Jerry Callahan, I was on his podcast the other day. I said, Jerry, what fake news is fake news is not always just lying. It's about what they're choosing to not show you. That makes it fake because people in Wellesley, liberals in Wellesley and Weston and Wayland and all those places and need them. They only read the globe for news. So if it's not in the globe, they don't know it exists. And the globe knows that. And so the globe can control the way they think. And so what they don't put in there, they don't know. So they don't know what a ratchet this. All they know about Kendra Lara is, well, she's, oh, Green New Deal, progressive, woke, yeah, young woman of color, historic first, glass ceiling smasher, great, yeah, awesome. Also, she makes sex tapes for kids and gets fucked in the ass and then laughs about it in front of her five-year-old autistic kid. But they don't mention that. They don't mention that part. So anyway, um, that is that story. And I don't think we're going to he be hearing much more about it. Let's talk about the next thing. Uh, the story out of Cohasset. We got to talk about this. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a cold. I'm still getting over. <clears throat> Let me check the donos real quick. I don't want to miss any. We do have a new dono here. Let's pull it up. 
for my girl Susie. I hope she roasted someone in this. Let's see. But Susie says, Sexy Susie says, thanks for exposing the child abusers and predators. That is why God loves us more. You're absolutely freaking right about that one. By the way, did you see, like, I'm not even, like, I, I'll, I'll get to it later. I'm going gonna, gonna to rant about this later. But anyway, thank you very much for that, Suzanne. If anyone else would like to donate uh, to Turtle Chat, you can click the link at the top of the comment section. Uh, and donate whatever amount of money you want, and you get to write a message that comes across when I get it. You can also do um, what you might call it. Uh, it's called Cash App. I'm dollar sign uh, Uncle Turtle Boy on Cash App. I will get the notification on my phone if you choose to do it that way. Okay, so let's go back to this story out of Swamp Scott. Do we have a hundred likes yet? I hope so. Hundred two. Let's keep it going. Keep hitting that button. Now, I got no freestyle tonight. I'll do it another night, though. I promise. I always had a busy day today. All right. So, this woman's name is uh, Anna Walsh. I think that's her name now. Walshy? I don't even know. It's got an E at the end. She's the mother of three from Cohasset. Coasset, for those of you unfamiliar, a lovely South Shore beach town, one of the wealthiest towns, I think, on the South Shore. Very exclusive. It only has a population of under 10,000 for a reason. They don't want you moving in there. Um, they got enough people. They want people with money. You got to have some money to live in Coasset. It's a nice town. And yeah, there's that. So let's talk. So her name is Anna. She's 39 years old. And she loves taking selfies. Loves taking selfies. She's from, I think, Slovenia or somewhere in Yugoslavia. There's her three strapping young lads. And she married this dude. Tell me this motherfucker is not the creepiest dude you've ever seen. We're doing some creepy guys tonight, huh? That's a creepy dude right there. Look at him. Ugh. He looks like one of these Charles Stewart types. This He reminds me. Look at him. Look at that motherfucker. And they're living the glamorous life. Now, they are, they appear they have a nice house in Cohasset and they own more property in Washington DC. Somehow. Now she has a house in Washington DC. This is weird. This is weird. Because she works down there as a real estate executive. And she works there 5 days a week and she comes back on the weekends. As soon as I heard that, I'm like, okay, I don't like this lady. I hope she's alive. But these people are fucking weird. That is a weird thing to do. Why would you want kids if you didn't if you weren't around them 5 days a week? What? Like you're to her, the job is if the job is more important than the kids, then why the fuck do you have kids? Like you don't have to have kids. I understand you get married, there's pressure to be, you don't have to. She wanted kids for the gram. That's what I think. Her Instagram is covered with pictures of herself and her children, professionally done pictures, get a lot of likes because they're cute. I know what it's like. If I post something, if I post a picture of myself on my Facebook page, I'll get a couple likes. Sure. I post a picture of my cute little kids. Oh, I'm going to get a lot of likes, aren't I? And likes make people feel good about themselves. There's something about that. And I think, where's the nanny? I think the nanny is dad. Because dad lives at the house with his mother, with grandma. And I don't think dad works. He's an art dealer, whatever that is. So I think that the dad is the nanny. He's like a state. Like, I think dad's taking care of the kids and grandma. She had him for the image. She wants to be the girl boss, right? She wants to be the girl that is on Instagram. It's like, ooh, I'm a single working mom and I'm hot and I'm here with my fun executive friends and we're sipping wine. And her Instagram is filled with other dudes. Other dudes. Like, there's no way this woman's not getting stuffed by other dudes. Stop it. Stop it. Did you see what, you know, her husband looks like? Come on. <coughs> so there they are in Venice being fabulous. That's their home in Cohasset. And they've been featured in Boston Magazine as an international art dealer. How many views did this blog get so far? 
58,000. Not too shabby. Biggest blog of the year so far. Not too sh- By the way, no one reads Turtle Boy, except we write a blog that could literally almost fill Gillette Stadium. But besides that, nobody reads Turtle Boy. Sure thing. Um, so these people are, um, you know, I think they consider themselves like high society, almost the Boston proper. They are featured in the globe, the lifestyle as, uh, he, he's written as an international art dealer, a Boston based international art dealer. He was featured in the globe in 2015 in an article titled where the power players fuel up. Basically him talking about eating at expensive fresh French restaurants and being a quote unquote art dealer. What does that even mean? How the fuck are you an art dealer? What is it? What you deal art? So he sell what you buy. How does an art dealer make money? You buy, you buy it for cheap and then you double the price. How do you make money on? How does that work? I don't know. It sounds shady to begin with. Basically, they're just vain, self-obsessed narcissists who want to project to the world how attractive and successful that they are. But she went missing on New Year's Day. And this is very shady. So let me read this to you. State police are now assisting in the search for a missing Cahasa mother of three, last seen on New Year's Day. 39-year-old Anna Walsh was last seen at her home in Cahasset shortly after midnight on January 1st. Police are turning to the public for help in locating her whereabouts. Cohasset's police chief, William Quigley, told the Boston News that uh, she was supposed to be uh, to going to Logan Airport on New Year's Day at 4.30 to head to her second residence in Washington, D.C.'s Northwest Quadrant. Stop right there. So the police are saying <coughs> that she's supposed to be going to the airport on New Year's Day. Where'd they get that information from? I would assume the husband, right? Well, the police don't know that. That's probably what they were told. But that's not what happened. Later on, they say something different. Her husband was sleeping during the time, of course. He told investigators she was supposed to get in a ride chair at 4.30. He never saw her get in it. And it was reported that she was trying to catch a flight. According to police, she had ticket issued and booked for January 3rd. Not January 1st. So stop right there. Stop right there. That to me is shady. This guy does not. He last sees her January 1st. <coughs> and he doesn't call the cops till January 4th. Three days. Three days. Now I understand. You, if his story is true and you expected her to get on a plane January 1st. Wouldn't you expect her to text you know, FaceTime the kids when you got there or something like that. Something. There's no way you'd go three days. No way. That doesn't make any sense at all. And his nobody believes this story either. Everybody's asking the same questions I am with this story. So, uh, like I said, she had ticket issued and booked for January 3rd. So he lied. I don't know why the police aren't saying that. again. But then again, the police aren't stupid. The police don't, I guarantee the police are considering this guy the primary suspect. They know something is shady here. Either this woman is pulling like some sort of gone baby gone thing that he's probably in on, which I doubt <coughs> because of the kids. Even though this woman had kids for the gram, she still must love them. I mean, it's not crusty panties like... She probably likes him a little bit and nobody's going to just disappear on their three kids and dip set on nobody. People might do that to their husband. You ain't going to do that to your three kids, period. No way. So police say her phone has been off since January 1st. There's no indication she arrived at Logan, you know, um, but had difficulties getting flight information due to the high volume delays. Police say Walsh's husband has been cooperative <laughs> According to the police, the special emergency response team are beginning a search of the area around the stop and shop. So that's interesting, but they didn't find anything. We're actively assisting the local authorities in their ongoing search for our beloved colleague. So Walsh's employer, Rubenstein strategic communication firm. She stands five to 115 pounds, olive complexion. I believe she speaks with an Eastern European accent. Okay. So, that's all very shady. Now, 
But what the media, for some reason, did not point out was wild. Like, and by the way, extremely relevant. Extremely relevant. Yeah. Unc, you never heard of, um, you never heard a story about him or a dad going out to get a gallon of milk and then never coming back? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Um, I mean, usually that just means they're just abandoning the family and they're in close proximity to you and they just don't play child support, but they don't just disappear. So, um, was there a life insurance policy? I'm sure. I'm sure there's a life insurance. I mean, who doesn't have life insurance? If you don't have life insurance and you're a grown up and kids, you should get life insurance guys. So, um, for some reason, the media isn't asking these questions, but. They, if they did, they'd find out that in 2017, he sold two fake Andy Warhol paintings for 80 grand that he said were worth 240 grand to an art dealer in LA. And he was sued over it and then charged. So this guy, there's these two um, paintings called Shadows. And he puts them on eBay. And he's like, these are legit. eBay? eBay? Who are these people that buy paintings? Like that mean like how much money do you how much fuck you money do you have if you can afford to pay eighty thousand dollars for a fucking a tomato can painting? Because that's what Andy Warhol painted, right? He's the tomato can guy. Tomato soup. By the way, can I get a score on Jaguars Titans? We really need the Jags in that one. We really they better not fuck this one up. <coughs> so anyway. Um, when gallery owner Ron Rivlin received the pieces, he discovered that the authentication stamps were non-existent. The supporting documentation was phony and the 38 year old, uh, were printed was no, the 38 year old works was no. So the forgeries appear to be quite recent and probably copies of the authentic, uh, originals. Brian and Anna Walsh likely sold the authentic walls to a collector in South Korea. And passed off the forgery. So they, they're they dealing with that. The South Korea thing is weird. Like they're dealing, they're fucking over rich people in South Korea. Oh, fucking Christ, Tennessee. If they win this fucking game. Okay. They, okay. They, they just scored a field goal. Is that right? All right, good. Keep me updated on that one. Anytime a score change happens in that, please let me know. Need to know. But, um, so goes on here and he, they passed the forgeries off uh, and they thought they could do it because they were on different continents. But I don't know how they thought they weren't going to, they got caught immediately. And by the way, I did, I was, I did get the court docket on this. I read the whole thing. She was in on it. Like I wasn't sure if she was just like an unwilling accomplice. She knew full well they were fake. She, she helped scam these guys out of it. Like she's a fraud too. I hope she's alive. I don't want her to be dead, but she's a scam artist. She's a shady person. Now he seems to be the ringleader of this all, but she knew exactly who he was and she was happy to be living off of the money from this all. They're dirtbags. Um, so it's unclear. Uh, so I said in the blog that it was unclear. I know for now it's clear. Here's the best part. They initially agreed to pay back the guy they scammed for 80 grand and only paid 30. So Rivlin contacted the cops and the Walshes. They promised to repay the 80, but only made two partial payments totaling 30. When they learned he reported them to the cops, they notified them that they refused to repay any more in retaliation for the reporting. So they're just like, yeah, oh, now we don't owe you the 50 G's anymore because you called the cops. What? That's not how it works, son. Not how it works. Now, in uh, later, they immediately cashed the check, the $80,000 check, spent it all. And they're over in Europe living it up. It gets worse. She also scammed the friend in South Korea, or he did, by telling him that he could sell the real Andy Warhol paintings for a good price in New York. He took the paintings with him and then just ghosted the guy. Didn't answer his calls, nothing. But it didn't work out because no one wanted his... You can't sell the paintings unless they, you could prove they're yours. So this art dealer, not much of an art dealer. He ends up... 
pleading guilty in 2021 and is currently awaiting sentencing. How does the media not report this? Missing woman, dad is a convicted felon awaiting a jail sentence. He's a liar. That's what he does. He's a scammer. And now the wife is dead. He owes people money. He's got shady friends in South Korea. Who the fuck knows what could have happened to this woman? There's a million time, There's a million possibilities that I think could have happened to this woman. Like, who's the guy in South Korea? That's what I like to know. Is he in that South Korean gang from Rush Hour? Is he part of that? The triads? Is he with them? Is that the wrong country? I don't know. Do they have a branch there? Because they can make a woman disappear, can't they? I would assume. Like, who the fuck? And did they tell him, like, we're going to get your kids if you say anything? I don't know. Did they pull a Giannetti and have, like, a, a, a guy with a knife in his throat? And be like, if you, uh, I do not know where my wife is. I have not seen her in three days. What? I tried to change. Okay, so I thought there would be a branch of the other countries. I don't know. Yeah, like I would assume of all the gangs in the world I don't want to fuck with, the Asian gangs are the ones I don't want to fuck with the most. The cartels, obviously, are dangerous. They have a lot of guns and bombs and stuff like that. But, like, the Asian ones wear suits, and they all know karate, and they're rich, and the power of... I don't trust the Asian gangs. I, they, I don't fuck with the Asian gangs. That's one thing I learned early on. We had Asian gangs in middle school. Nobody fucked with the Asian gangs. It's danger. You don't do that. Anyway. Um, so yeah, but you, yeah, there is a, there is a, uh, anyway. Um, yeah, they're dealing with fake. Like I, I don't trust the Asian gangs. So the, I, I have a, it's got like, come on. There's a million possibilities of where there's, obviously there's a possibility. Let's talk about possibilities that could happen. In this one. What do you guys think? What are your theories on this? Okay, let's take a vote in the comments right now. Vote one if you think she's alive, two if you think she's dead. Go ahead. One if she's alive, two if she's dead. Let's Paul Revere this motherfucker. Oh, we got it. Oh, some people think she's alive? Wow, I was not expecting any once. But Heidi thinks she's alive. Carrie thinks she's alive. Peggy Sue, thick chick. The majority, I think, here are saying they don't think she's alive. Oh, so oh, so where Courtney? Uh, so let's hear some theories. People who think she's alive. A lot of people seem to think she's alive. I think she's in on it. Explain. So how did like if she's in on it? Here's my question. How does this end for them? What is their goal? Collect the life insurance policy and then what? Never see your kids again? Right? She's never going to see her kids again? What is the plan here? Are they all, are they all going to move to South Korea? Because they'll get extradited. Like, like seriously. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. What is the plan? Because the kids make me think that that's why I think she's dead is because the kids. She already barely sees her kids. That's true. But she don't get any more likes on Instagram. Oh, good. The Jags are about to get a punt. Good. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, th to me, this whole freaking... I, I guess I hope she's alive. Um, it's better than dead. I don't wish death upon anyone, but I just, I can't imagine she's alive. I can't. So her Instagram and her Facebook are still up. She obsessively posts all over there. Like, look at these pictures, dude. Like, get over yourself. I'm sorry. Like, get over yourself. It's felt like with the strawberries. What are we doing here? There she is with her coworkers. Uh, no, I mean, this whole thing, this whole pose here, like, look, the, the glass of wine, the legs crossed, the fi the romantic fireplace. It's always happy hour somewhere. Bitch, you got three kids. What are you talking about? And then always the pictures with the coworkers. Like, dude, like these guys aren't running train on her. Stop it. 
Come on. Come on. Like my, oh, my best friend, like she hasn't posted a picture with her husband in years, years. Like this woman loved her job way more than she loves her kids. Like way more. And then out of nowhere yesterday, while I'm writing the goddamn story, what happens? The house that they sold three months ago to another Eastern European woman goes up in flames. Just the whole thing lights up on Jerusalem Road. The house is on fire. What? We got to fix the cam here. <laughs> that, see, that's not a filter. That's the wrong camera here. Hold on. I don't know what just happened. Hopefully that's fixed. Don't know what happened there. People say evidence cleaning. I mean, the police are saying that the fire is not suspicious or related to this. I don't know that. I mean, that's quite the coincidence, don't you think? Come on, dude. So, like, what are your theories on the house burning? Because I could, like, what are your theories on this? Who burnt it? Did she burn it? I'm so confused. Did the cartel burn it? Did the triads do it? I don't know. Because they don't even own the house. But somebody pointed out, by the way, and I, and I did have this in the blog, that um, <coughs> the Cohasset Assessor's Office lists this property as owner by Anna Walsh. What? And they were doing a search close to of the woods close to her home. Why are they doing that? Why like why do they some people were telling me they think she's in a house close by? Dude. Dude, this is so weird. This is the biggest do we like we are in the middle of one I'm telling you guys, this is gonna be one of the biggest stories of the, the of the country. Like this is going to be Dateline. Like, like this is what Dateline was literally made for with stories like this one. Shady husband, past coming out, woman missing, three kids, like house burns. What the hell's going on here? What the hell's going on here? I don't know. Nobody knows. So we will see what happens with that one. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any theories. Anybody have any theories? I'd like to see any theories uh, in the comments if they'd like to share their thoughts. 48 hours and lifetime. Oh, yeah, oh, lifetime for sure. Lifetime for sure. I, I'm with Mike Jenkins. They have to know. They have to know more than they're saying. Totally. He burned her in the house. But the, how could he... There's no way he'd burned it. I don't think he could burn it because there's no way the cops aren't watching him right now. Like the cops know he he's a suspect. They don't trust him. They're, he's not going to go and burn the house down. He's probably got cameras everywhere too. Her girlfriend owed the lady money. Oh, they're Russian too. That's true. Her girlfriend owed the lady money. She didn't pay. Lady freaked out, went AWOL. Whose girlfriend? Uh, who? Who? I, like, I'm with you, Joey. I, I don't get. Like, I have no idea, man. I have no idea. I got no theories on this. May, yeah, maybe it was a crusty. Maybe it was a mass soul troll mafia. Maybe they did it. I don't know. Oh, their phone last pinged at the stop and shop. That's why they were there. Interesting. You think she took off through the woods and got a ride? Ooh, that's, dude. Yeah, like, come on. Neil Entwistle, wasn't that guy, the British guy who killed his wife? This whole thing, at first I got the Charles Stewart vibes coming from this one. <coughs> I mean, this husband screwed someone over, but the wife was in on the scam. That's not a defense of him. They're, I'm just saying they're both scummy. 
And bottom line is this doesn't happen to people that just obey the law and live a normal life. But they wanted, they got fulfillment out of living the Instagram life. That's what Oh, and we didn't even talk about the best part here. Dude, the dad left him out of the goddamn will. And the the I this is the, this is God damn it. Why does that keep happening? Sorry about that. I'm back. I'm back. So the dad writes in the will the following. So he's like, okay, my dad's dead. How much money did I make off of my rich dad? The dad writes, my wishes, but nothing, my best wishes, but nothing else. Fuck you. Do you know what a piece of shit you have to be for your dad to leave you nothing? And then on top of it, right, my best wishes, but nothing else. And so he didn't take that very well. And he went and he raided his dad's estate and stole a bunch of shit. So you have to be a piece of... That to me tells me more about his character than anything that the dad left him out of the will. That to me tells me everything. So, all right. Um, let us uh, move on here. So... It's the fourth quarter now. The Jags are, dude, if the Jaguars blow this game, then the Patriots have no choice but to win tomorrow. Obviously, uh, we we should probably try to win tomorrow. Uh, odds are we won't make it because we're still counting on the stupid Jets. Dude, if you're in a position where you need the Jets and the Browns to win a game, ooh, you're in trouble already. But if the Jaguars win this game, then we would lose a tiebreaker with them for the final wild card. If the Dolphins, the Patriots, and the Steelers all lost tomorrow, the Jaguars would get in. So we need the Jaguars to win the division so two teams from this crap bag division don't get in. We'll see. Oh, this isn't. I've been in commercial real estate, never heard of her. She's had her job for two years. Something doesn't add up. That's a prestigious company. Do you think she like lied on a resume or something? Interesting. Okay. So uh, let's talk about next what happened to me at court the other day, shall we? Let's go to the video. Oakley Doakley. Oh, and by the way, let me check the donors. I don't want to miss anyone. If we got any turtle chats. We do have a couple turtle chats. Let me just uh, get to this real quick. And then we'll watch the video. First up on turtle chat. Ed sends $10 and he goes, give this cheddar to Gianetti so he can spit some bars for a new show. Open Mike G is a prophet, yo. Thank you. Yeah. Mike G has been messaging me nonstop recently, but he messages me at the worst times. He's so retarded. <coughs> um, then he says, she left. Peggy sends $5. Though. She left because, and thank you, Ted. She left because she doesn't want to be the full-time parent when he goes to prison. She chooses to work in DC all week instead of raise her kids. What does he have to benefit from killing her? Life insurance. Pay his debts before he goes to prison for 39 months and risk prison forever. I don't think the, these guys think in the term of like risking prison. Uh, I don't think so. He said, she, uh, Peggy writes, you have the wrong Affleck movie. It's gone girl. Not baby gone girl. Not baby gone. What was I saying? Oh yeah. Gone girl. That's the name of it. Thank you. I do have the wrong Affleck movie. All right. So thank you for that. Um, we also got a cash app here. Cindy Lima sends 25 big ones. She doesn't leave a comment, uh, but thank you, Cindy, for the dono. I appreciate that. Anybody else would like to donate? Again, the link is at the top. Uh, you can write a message. I bring it up. You can give a shout out to somebody. Call some, call one of your enemies. I don't care. That Whatever you want to do, it's your turtle chat. Okay, let's talk about court tomorrow, shall we? 
And somebody did make a good point with crusty panties. They're like, I saw, and people are starting to turn against her on her channel. Obviously there will be the legion of retards who will believe anything. Now Kate has convinced these people, right? That I am a pathological liar, which is actually brilliant on her part because she knows I'm going to put out some true shit about her. So she preempts it by saying he's a pathological liar. Nothing he says can be trusted. And these idiots, you know, they, they hear me, you know, point some documents out and she's like, Oh, they're, they're just fake documents. Oh, he's just a liar, right? They're, they're fake. They're forgeries. Nope. Nope. They're real. So, um, so I go to court yesterday, as you know, crusty panties being charged with a crime. She harassed a very nice woman by the name of Lauren. Uh, number one, because she is friends with me and she posted images of this woman, nude images that she received from a very spiteful cunt named Christina Yakamoski and posted them against her will several times. She also posted this woman's address. People came to her home, said her name, all this shit. Actually, Lauren made a really good video. Let me play this video for you real quick, just to show you what this woman actually put her through. I'm going to play this. Check this out. Lauren M. of Roslindale. Um, so that is Lauren yeah. Murray of Roslindale. With yeah, you can do that. I mean, her face is pretty, but I feel like she needs a little Rogaine. From that other oh, place. Leah, your, your face is not so pretty anymore. Murray from Roslindale. I can give you. It's gonna be it. a doozy when that video comes out. That's gonna I be. I can't epic. wait. I can't wait. This is evil what they're talking about. Members only stream. Like they're sharing images of this woman. On both fucking counts, son. And you should really be fucking worried about what kind of videos and photographs I may or may not have right now, and where they're gonna go. And because I can promise you, they're not going on the internet first. Gator and Lauren number one there. Lauren Murray's life about to get brisk. Do you know, do you know how many restraining but, orders filed on me this year? Zero. <coughs> and I believe the slogan is Kate always wins. Well, apparently she doesn't. Because Kate did not win today. Uh, a full year harassment prevention order was placed on Kate. Objection. Fair to say that Ms. Peter and uh, Mr. Kearney have gone back and forth online. Uh, in an online battle. Sustained, sustained. Sustained. Your Honor, I'm, I'm simply just asking. I, I believe we've, we've had more than three posts. Um, she she's clearly is in danger of irreparable harm, Judge. She needs a harassment check protection order. She's here to ask for your help. And, and this is the only avenue she has. So I, I just would say we have, we've met the willful and malicious, the three contacts. We know that tonight she's got a show ready to blog about this not a good look so, Kate. not a good look she needs protection judge so i simply would ask the court to please protect my client from any further harm and grant the harassment prevention order i will not have to take down your pictures because it's not covered under a harassment order i don't give a now that right there that i will not take your pictures down that is when the order kate already had an order in place when she said that. So she spoke directly. She's had this whole thing is I can talk about you as long as I don't talk to you. Well, the second, like it's good advice not to talk about him at all. Cause eventually you're going to slip up, which you did right there. You spoke to her in that you, you said you and Kate said, Oh, I'm, the, the police aren't going to charge me with that. Well, they filed for a criminal complaint over that. And she's like, well, they're not going to, not going to go anywhere. It's just a uh, file. The bus, the police don't know what they're doing. It did. It went to a magistrate's hearing. They found probable cause. You were charged with it, which Lauren covers in this video. What the fuck 
The only reason those pictures are up is because Aiden isn't. On top of the pending criminal charges that she has filed by the Boston Police Department for violating the temporary harassment prevention order, which was just extended for a full year, largely in part to the fact that she already violated it and is being charged. So that helped. So Kate always wins. Kill shot Kate. Knows what she's talking about. Knows the law. No big deal. No chance of losing this. Lost. Didn't go too well. I become arrest me or just straight up file charges. They push it off to a clerk magistrate who will have to decide whether or not it, it meets the uh, burden of probable cause there, which is still pretty low. You know, so let's let's be clear there. Like probable cause is still pretty low. But I do have an attorney for that. Thanks, Doc. shaking, crying, like that's genuine nine months of terror and harassment caused by this animal, Kate Peter. Excuse me, Miss Peter, Aiden Carney, TV Daily News. I uh, just wanted to ask you a few questions if you had a couple moments. So yeah, we wanted to know, how do you, uh, is there anything you have to say to the victim of the crime that you're here at Jamaica Plain being prosecuted for? Do you have any comment about that, Miss Peter? Have to go to work right now. Does, does your employer know that you're facing criminal charges for violating a harassment prevention order, Miss Peter? Right does King? So uh, Kate seems to be. Um, she doesn't seem to understand how the First Amendment works. Uh, freedom of the press is covered under the First Amendment, and I am media. Uh, I, I don't know what she thinks media is in this country. Media is anyone who covers the news. There's no like secret cult of in the media like you're not like well you're media you work for something controlled by a billionaire so you must be media and you're not because you only have a sub stack like, no i'm media i'm covering the news i've broken more real news than any other media in the area everyone knows that i mean it's not a secret and yeah i'm media and as you can see there i was acting in a professional capacity as i interviewed her on the way out i'm just looking for comment that's what the media does they ask criminal defense you have any comment about the victims any comment about that she had no comment she was looking to get into an argument about something uh i did not jump in the gutter with her i could have i guess but that's not what professional well-respected members of the media do i'm sorry I'm, I'm i'm a serious journalist i had a button-down shirt on i was wearing a belt i uh, i wasn't wearing sneakers i had sold shoes okay um, and I don't know, like, it's like, I'm taking this seriously, Miss Peter. Do you have any comments? And that made her more mad because she wants me to go ratchet on her ass. She wants me to go full chili on her. She wants me to go out of tart on her and I'm not going to do it. I'm a well-respected award-winning journalist. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. So, uh, that was a very well done video by Lauren number one. So, um, I, the, as you can saw in that video at the end of it there, I start to question her. Now, she had claimed that there would be men with her. Remember she made that we, I played that other video. Well, there will be men. There will be men. Where's the men, Kate? Where are the men? She came alone. And she threatened me, like, if you show up, men are going to hurt you, which is the biggest threat to free speech I've ever heard to tell a member of the media, you can't report on this woman's criminal activity or else you're going to get hurt. No, that's, uh, that's not going to happen. I won't accept that. If if anybody lays a finger on me, I won't kick their ass, even though I could. Let's be honest. I could kick that junkie's ass any day of the week if I wanted to. Kate, come on. Have you seen your have you seen Andrew Johnson? He hits women and shit. I would kick the shit out of him. I think we both know that. Trust and believe, girlfriend. Trust and believe. But it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen because I'm not gonna do that. There's no need for that. I'm there to cover the news. I could if I wanted to. I'm physically capable of it, but I'm not going to. So let's be very clear about that. But because I interviewed her there and it made her uncomfortable, she has been spreading this lie that I, like, that the victim has been stalking her. She actually said that. The victim has been stalking her because they were in the same courtroom together because they parked in the same parking lot and they were near each other in the parking lot. 
So the victim is, she's trying to deflect. It's like, do you think that's sound legal strategy? Do you think the judge is going to be like, oh, well then I guess we'll forget about your crime that the Boston police charged you with. I guess we'll just forget about that. Cause the vic, cause you said with zero evidence that the victim was near you in a parking lot. They were charge dismissed case dismissed. What now that that's stupid, obviously, but her lawyer lawyers will do whatever the client pays them to do. And the lawyer is going with the strategy, which is fucking brilliant. It's just, please, more of that, please. These idiots that don't listen to good legal advice, then just tell their lawyers that, let, just do this. I mean, he doesn't care. You just put money in the machine. He gets paid. What does he care? But, um, so this time around, she makes sure that she did bring someone with her. So I'm in the courtroom. I'm not sitting with the victim. And I notice who's in the corner there. Oh, it's Andrew Johnson. It's Andrew Johnson. He's here. Well, that's interesting. So at the end at the hearing, they call the lawyer up and I did request the audio for this today. Hopefully it'll be here soon and I'll play it. Cause I was so confused. He started going off on a rant about something about the, victim has a YouTube channel and she's stalking my client and the victim is the fiance of turtle boy. And they have a business together. It was like tinfoil hat shit. I'm like looking at the victim. Like what? I'm what is it? What are you talking about? So anyway, I get, I, I could tell this is going to leave. So I'm going to go outside. I'm going to be in the stairway. And I'm going to interview her on the way out. So that's how I do. So the victim came out first and she went to her car. Now, apparently the judge said like Kate's lawyer did this whole thing where he was like, oh, you know, they're stalking whatever at my car. And the judge is just like both parties just leave each other alone. And the victim did that. The victim went right to her car. Now, I'm not a party to this. I'm media. She doesn't seem to understand the difference in this. I'm not a party to this. She, she thinks I am a party to it because she wants to make me a party to it. I'm not. The judge made that very clear at the hearing. I have nothing to do with this. This is about you and the victim, period. Law number one. And like Aaron says, she can do whatever the fuck she wants because she doesn't have an order on her. You do, stupid. I know you don't know how the law works, but you can't. She didn't post shit about you ever. Why you should have just left her alone. You didn't though. You couldn't help yourself. So, but she uh, but listens to the judge and, and leaves. And as a result of this, Kate comes out with her boyfriend and her lawyer. And this is how it goes down. Let's watch and see what happens here. Okay. So I'm going to break down the play by play here. So, you see them coming out there. That's Andrew in the front, followed by the lawyer. And now they see me. Now he sees me. And I got my camera. This is the Genetti House of Justice here, the Genetti Court Steps. And Andrew Johnson starts walking towards me immediately. Miss Peter, any comment? Okay. So now I can tell, tell what's going on here. This man is attempting to obstruct me from questioning her. A member of the media, an award-winning journalist, this man is attempting to stop me. So, let's see what happens. Oh, did they... Yes, they scored a touchdown. Yes! Yes, how much time is left? Two minutes. Add a baby. Add a baby, Jags. Nice. Okay, good. Okay, glad to see that. <laughs> now, watch what Andrew Johnson does here. And tell me this is not assault. So he stands in front of me and then he blocks me. Now, see how he's short. Now I try to go around him. Watch this. And then see that that's him sticking his arm out, trying to block my path. That ladies and gentlemen is assault. You cannot do that. I have a right to walk. You, I'm, I'm attempting to walk in a straight line. You jump in front of me and stick your arm out. You can't do that. And that's the first contact. Don't fucking touch me. And I go and see how he bounced back there. I mean, no fucking and he's like trying to keep blocking me. He's moving now. See his foot. And now look at the lawyer and Kate. 
they don't see any of this. She later goes on to claim that I pushed her or something like that and that she has witnesses. What witnesses? Your lawyer has his back turned. The only, and we don't even need a goddamn witness because we got a video. It's even better. We got a video. Any comment? Don't touch me. And I'm trying to walk down the stairs and he's pushing me again on the fucking stairs. He tried to push me down the fucking stairs. And now he jumps in front of me and he's going to extend his arm out and he's going to push me. And that's the thing. No, I should not have trucked him down the stairs because that is exactly what they wanted me to do. They wanted me to hit him so that they can play victim. And then, you know, the member award-winning members of the media don't attack people. Sometimes you get assaulted and you just take the legal needs necessary. That's it. I'm a dignified award-winning member of the media. I don't stoop to that level, period. And I don't give them what they want. I don't, this is trash. You can't jump in the, I could kick this guy's fucking ass. I would beat the fuck out of this drug guy. You don't think I would love to do that, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Fuck no. I'm not doing that. And that's, that's the other thing. There's got to be camera foot. Uh, that, I'm going to request the camera footage. Trust me. So he's jumped in front of me at this point. Do not. And I'm yelling, don't touch me. Do, and did you see that part? What? Do, I'll, I'll just do it. Don't real quick. touch me. Do not touch me. Do, do, you gonna touch me? You're on yeah. video touching me. So watch this. See his arm here. Don't touch. Watch this. Do not touch me. See that? See his arm? See how his arm is sticking out there? That, ladies and gentlemen, right there is evidence of the push. He's pushing me. He's trying to fucking push me. Because he knows he can't stop me. The shoulder check ain't working, son. So he pushes me. Look at that face. Look at that face. That's a junky demon. He looked like he was nodding out in court. She brought her pet junkie with there. With her. So that's assault. And you know how I know this is assault? Because I brought this tape to the Boston Police Department in Jamaica Plain right after it happened. Because that's what you do when you're an award-winning member of the media and you're assaulted for covering a story. And they agreed. <laughs> I go, would you agree? That, does that look like assault and battery? They go, yep. <laughs> no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And they're saying, well, why wasn't he charged? Because that's not the way it works, motherfucker. He didn't kill someone. So now how this works is a detective is assigned to it. The detective is going to be, usually it takes a couple days for the detective to call back. Because the police work slowly, just like they did with Kate. And then we figure it out. But as we can see, guess what? He's already, right now, out on bail on two felony charges. We're going to get to that in the Monday show. Oh, boy. This motherfucker is being currently being charged with assault and battery with a dangerous weapon on a 15-year-old child. There was a domestic incident in which he assaulted Kate's daughter and a knife was involved. And allegations of sexual assault. Wait till you see the police report on this one. It's going to blow your fucking mind. You do not want to miss Monday's show. I repeat, you do not want to miss Monday's show. And you will, like, if you thought Kate was a piece of shit before, wait until Monday's show when you find out what her children have been subjected to by this animal. That's what, look, that's an animal right there. That face. That is a fucking animal. That is not a man. That is an animal. It's a drugged out junkie animal. But anyway, that's the evidence right there that he pushed me. And it didn't work. I'd like to point that out. Oh, he's a, he scared you. Did I stop? Did I stop? Did I, did I, did I, did I get to Kate and ask her questions? I did. I did. His attempts to stop me were unsuccessful. I was not intimidated by him. I will not be intimidated by you, son. Yeah, it's a special Monday show. You're going to want to watch it. So let's play some more. Do, do, you going to touch yeah. me? You're on yeah. video touching me. That's all right. Excuse me. I have a right to watch. And there you go. That's the admittance there. I played that to the police. I go... 
you just touched me. You just touched me. It's on video that you just touched me. He goes, that's all right. The police, according to the police, that is an admittance that he just touched me. You have no right to touch me, son. Was I shaking in my boots? Yeah, fucking right. Do I sound like I'm shaking my boots? Hell no. <laughs> like, hell no. Like, I'm going to be a magic rope in Worcester. I'm not scared of little junkies like this from North Attleboro. Stop it. Monday's show is at 9, and you're not going to want to miss it. Not going to want to miss it. So let's see what happens when I try to interview Kate. Miss Peter, any comment? Any comment about why you violated the harassment prevention order, Miss Peter? Do you see that? She starts yelling something. I can't tell what he's saying. The lawyer's like, shut the fuck up, bitch. Any comment about the criminal charges today? Okay, so here's Newt Gingrich here. Or I guess she hired Newt Gingrich to be your goddamn um, attorney. So Newt Gingrich, he tells me about the judge. I couldn't hear what she was saying, by the way. I couldn't hear that. You know her. She just thinks that she can talk away on anything. She can't. At least she didn't wear the Cleveland Browns coat. About the criminal charges Listen, today. The judge, the judge just said all interested parties. I'm media. I'm media. So uh, I just have a comment. I'm here to report on a criminal matter, criminal charge. Any comment, Miss Peter? You're a Excuse me? Did you guys hear what he said there? Why am I saying Monday? Because it's Monday. I like I'm not misspeaking. Let me be very clear. I don't do Monday shows. I don't normally do Monday shows. Monday we're doing a only special. This is a special show. And I'm going to unleash some court documents today that I got a hold of about Andrew Johnson. I had no idea what an animal this man is. A fucking animal. And he lives with her and she allows him around her children and this is the man that dcf specifically said needs to be out of your house if you want your kids back and she chose him over her children that's a fact it's an undeniable fact so what the lawyer said there was <clears throat> You're an accomplice, he says. You heard, the judge told you. First of all, the judge did not tell me anything. I was not even in the courtroom when that happened. I was already outside. And the judge is not telling me anything because I'm media. I have a right to do this. The judge cannot. If the judge told a member of the media you can't question somebody, that would be a 1A violation immediately. We would call Mark Randaza up, and there would be injunctions immediately if that happens. Immediately. But. You said the accomplice. He goes, you're an accomplice to what? That's what your brain sounds like on crusty panties right there. Because Kate has been telling the lawyer that the victim is stalking her. Except the victim's not here. So now he's saying you're, an, you're not a member of the media. You're an accomplice. The, vic the victim is actually the bad guy. And you're helping, the vic you're helping her out. This is how fucking deluded they are. Again, I don't know if the lawyer is stupid enough to believe this, but he's being paid to say it, and Kate feels confident. They filed a motion to dismiss. She was arraigned. They filed an, an arraignment is just being formally charged with a crime, and then they set court dates for pretrial conference and all this other stuff, and he gets to file a motion to dismiss. The Suffolk County District Attorney's Office will, of course, oppose it, because why would they dismiss it? On what grounds? Etc. The lawyer's doing his job, sure. The lawyer's job is, the lawyer's lack. Lawyers get, lawyers get paid to say whatever the fuck the client, you put money in the machine, they say what you want. Sure. Totally. I agree. The lawyer's doing his job. But watch is that coming from the attorney? Any comment about the criminal charges? About the continued violation of the innocent victim? Where's your ring? Do you have a ring? Where's your ring? <laughs> By the way, this, uh, not that it matters, not that it's like the biggest deal, but uh, what happened to girl boss? So she paid girl boss lawyer for the, to get her out of the order and it failed and she can't afford girl boss lawyer anymore. So now she's got new Gingrich. So it is what it is. Now he's, I did know it. Like she says, this guy's her husband. We know it's not, we know that's not her husband. Is it the biggest deal? No. But she calls him her husband all the time, and it makes you just wonder, why, why lie about that? I don't get that. 
Yeah, and I know the answer to that. I know the answer to that. She lies because marriage, the institution of marriage, is a, let me think, like, I don't know the right way to put this. It's like a symbol of, not, I don't, classiness is not the right word, but like middle class American living, I guess. Like, you know, it's what, like, trashy people like her. They live in trailer parks and they, you know, they reproduce and then they go from one boyfriend to the next. Marriage is a symbol of normalcy. There you go. Normalcy, stability, and none of which are in her life. So she wants to pretend like she, like I'm married. She wants to refer to him as her husband because it sounds better than calling somebody a boyfriend. And is it the biggest deal that she's lying about this? No, because she's lied about a lot worse thing than this. But if you are a supporter of hers, which you're retired in, obviously, don't, I mean, doesn't it make you wonder why is she lying to me about this? Why? She's not married to him. We're going to see in the police reports on Monday that she tells the police it's her boyfriend. She tells the police it's her boyfriend. So, what? and by the way, you guys see his hat? Check out his hat. No ring, huh? So you're not married. Okay, so it's not married. Look at his face. Look at his face. Look at his face. With you. Look at you. You're so mad. You're so mad. Yeah. You're so mad. I'm real mad. Oh, I know you are. <laughs> Is that not the funniest thing? I'm real mad. I'm real mad. I'm real mad. <laughs> what? Who says that? I'm real mad. I'm real mad. What? Oh, girl. I'm real mad. Yeah, I'm so mad. I'm a man. Okay, told me. Look at the hat he's wearing. This guy. I mean, this is how. This is what he wore to fucking court. Can you guys see the hat? It says. Might get a better view over here. Or what, do we have a better view over here? Let me think. It says like lubrication service. I don't know what it is. Oh, we'll come back to that. It says some. It's like something sexual. I'm real mad. You. You're so mad. You're so mad. Yeah. <coughs> You're so mad. I'm real mad. Oh, I know you are. Big words. And those are big words for him. Okay, so I guess there's no comment from Ms. Peter. Uh, what you saw there, a little angry, a little angry. No comment about the criminal charges. About violation of the harassment prevention order of a completely innocent person. I guess there's no comment. So, oh, here's, how come there's no ring on that finger? I'm so confused. And that was the end of that. Now, is the game over yet, by the way? They won. The Jaguars won. Sweet. Okay, good. All right. We're alive, baby. We're alive. We can still make it and lose. We can still make it and lose. So where was Shiz, by the way? I mean, where was uh, Shannon? She wasn't there. She claims she was right around there. Shannon, this is what a weirdo she is. At the time this was happening, Shannon posted a video and said, I'm visiting my dead baby fetus at the cemetery where I put up a thing to recognize my fetus. And which is in West Roxbury, so not far away. And so she conveniently was visiting the memorial for the fetus at uh, the same time in the same neighborhood that, and she, and on her video, she goes by the courthouse. So she wants us to believe that she was there the whole time. She wasn't. She was not there. She's just, they're all just fucking pathological liars. They're all pathological liars. So yeah, Andrew mad. Andrew so mad. Like, dude, why does, can we just talk about his, like, what is with the goddamn facial hair? Excuse me. You gotta touch me. Like, Miss Peter, any comment? Don't touch me. Do not, not touch me. Do it's like why why can't he grow a facial hair 
Why is there a thing right there? What's with the dev? Dude, tell me this is not crackhead Andrew Luck. This is crackhead Andrew Luck. Look at him. I'm mad. I'm big mad. Yeah, I'm so mad. I've, I can't go go to you all the way around. Uh, I will have men with me. If that's what you call this, if this is what a man looks like, Kate, with his uh, poor Simon shirt on there, I'm not so sure about that. I don't, men don't look like this around me. Crackheads do. I don't know about men. I don't know about men. Getting a text here. Let me see this. <coughs> okay, so the hat says on it, in and out lubrication expert. That's what he wore to court. A hat that says in and out lubrication expert. So <laughs> the first thing Krusty Panties did when she got in the car was light a cigarette too. She must smoke like 10 packs a day or some shit. Who knows? I mean, these are trashy people. They live in Section 8 housing in the slums of North Attleboro. The cops go to their house all the time. There's constant calls there. The daughter has gone missing twice, and that's not shitting on the daughter. That's shitting on the parenting. If your daughter is running away from you constantly, what does that say about you and the house you're raising this child in? That they feel the need to run away from you multiple times, and you're not ashamed of it somehow. It's evil what this woman does to these kids. Evil. And then she'll hide behind it and say, well, you can't talk about that because you're being mean to my kids. No, we're not. We're calling out you and you need to stop hiding behind them because you're hurting the children. You've done so much damage to these poor kids already. Like it's horrible. So as you see there, undeniable, right? But she's such a pathological liar that even she spins this as I'm in trouble, listen to this. She got, she immediately, I know she, I know she can't help herself. She goes on discord and goes on voice chat. <coughs> and I streamed myself listening to it on the way home. And a lot of the idiot, everybody on her discord is a legal expert on anything. They're it's the biggest collection of retards ever. And none of them are from around here, as you'll hear by their accents. And they're all convinced that I'm going to jail because that's what Kate tells them. Of course I'm not. And she is facing a charge and somehow that doesn't click to them. They're like, wait a minute, maybe I'm on the wrong team. Let me be clear to all those people out there. If you're stupid enough to be in this, that's one thing. But once the information is provided to you and you chill, I mean, you're welcome to, we're the good guys. You're welcome over here. You, It's okay to realize that you're wrong about something and come around. A lot of people have done it. You don't have, I understand pride and you might not like my personality, but I am not lying to you. I am not lying to you. Yeah. I mean, for her to ask, I mean, just the irony of asking where my kids are. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, um, this is her on discord afterwards talking about it. Listen. Nobody fucks with me. That's what she says right there about this. Play it again. Like, don't fucking come for me and my family like that. Like, don't come for me and my family like that. Come for you? I'm the media. I have every right to question you. Don't come for me like that. Andy and I are a fucking train wreck together, but like, nobody fucks with me. When he nobody fucks with me. What are you in the mafia? Nobody fucks with you? Like, that's telling the media... That you can't question her because nobody fucks with me. I'm not there to fuck with you, Kate. I'm there to get answers to my questions. Because the public has a right to know. You're a big superstar on social media, aren't you? You're kill shot Kate. You make uh, you 60 grand. Right? That's what you do. You can, you can raise a lot of money for legal fees. Because you get yourself into these legal troubles. And oh yeah, by the way, somebody made a good comment on her stream the other day. A lot of people are starting to turn against her. And they're like, what are we... What did people donate to? Like, okay, so we donated all this money, so you get all this legal trouble. But what do you make? You don't even stream anymore. 
your last stream was you and two fat chicks roaming the streets of Boston together in the rain. And that's what we get for our money. What? And a lot of people are starting to realize that they're like, wait, a minute, what am I paying for here? What, what is this for? Uh, what is this money going to? And you fired the lawyer. What? Okay. But this idiot, what she just did right there. Nobody fucks with us. She's basically announcing there that, yeah, I brought this guy to fucking be like, you know, threaten and hit anyone who fought. And we got her on tape a million times saying that you're going to get hit. If you come to the courthouse, we're going to beat you up. We're going to bring men with us that are going to hurt you. Really? You said that on tape and then you followed through on it. I mean, how stupid are you? You're facing a criminal charge and then you caught one while you were there. Your boyfriend, Kate, is definitely getting criminally charged. The question is whether or not you will be as well because you brought him there. You said you threatened me with men and then a man assaulted me. Um, a man. He assaulted me. Many men. Yeah, there were many men. But only one came. Only one came. Man, man, a lot of men have thrown loads in you, but only the one came. Well, they all came, but... Um, that's just he does not let that happen. Aiden's so lucky he didn't get punched in the face, to be completely honest. And I'm willing to bet Andy, one of the reasons Andy didn't punch him in the face was because he knew that it would only add fuel I mean, to the fire and he knows it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's much bigger than Aiden, like, you know. <laughs> Can we just talk about how beautiful that was? So Aiden honestly right seems right like the type of person. Um, he's like the chihuahua in the group where he, he loves to talk and loves to uh, posture like he's big and bad. But as soon as somebody bigger than him or somebody that can actually do something stares him down, he's like, shit. And then it's starts all- like. God. I mean, that's exactly what he cried. It's assault. Like, bitch, it's not assault. He walked in front of you. You never put hands. This is how stupid she is. <clears throat> it's not assault. He never put hands on you. Just because you tell your, I mean, she treats discord like therapy. Goes in there, tells him, well, it's not assault because we said it's not assault. What? Well, the police said it is. Well, I'm not going to get charged with it because I said I'm not being charged with it. And I know the law and Eden's really stupid. Ha ha. Isn't Eden dumb? You guys all agree with me, right? And then they all do. And it's like, it convinces her that, oh yeah, I'm not getting charged because all these idiots agree with me. Kate, you're not going to listen to me, of course, but not smart. The, those people you're talking to, they don't, they're incels. They don't know anything. They're, they're, they're stupid. These are stupid people. They're li- I mean, if you have time to sit on discord all day and idolize someone like you, you know, you're trash. Then obviously, yeah, of course. And again, she never saw shit. She had her, she had her back to me the whole time. And it's on video. It's on video. And so this idiot, this incel here asks her, did he put hands on her? He walked in front of you. <laughs> nope. You didn't see. He never put hands on you. He didn't huh? push you. He didn't do nothing. Like, bro. Yes, he did. And we got it on video. And the police agree. <laughs> and he's also honestly one of the people, too, that loves to um, point out that um, with without sugarcoating it, he's one of the people that loves to try and be like, oh, well, everybody's just being a bitch because they want to cry about this, that, and the third when reality is actually this, that, and the third. But he's one of the fastest ones to cry about something like what? that he says people shouldn't what cry about like legal advice? he didn't put hands on you or anything like that but you're screaming he did put hands on me. Um, okay. i was assaulted even though no hands were put on you or verbally mm, right in the video thrown right. at you okay. or anything like that like bro you're hmm. the hypocrisy is real oh yeah what <laughs> but obviously that guy's a moron you saw in the video that he did put hands on me and i don't pretend to be a tough guy I could kick his ass, but I'm not. I'm there 
not I'm not there to fight you. I'm there to cover. And like somebody said in the comments, all you have to do is just get in your car and go. It might be a minor inconvenience for 45 seconds to be asked questions by the media. You just jump in your car and you go. But she can't help it. She can't help it because that's what trash does. That's what trash does. So, play a little more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah listen yeah, to that. that. Yeah. Getting sound legal advice. That guy, whoever the fuck that guy is, he knows what's going on. And all these, these idiots who you know, demand that they are alpha males and all that crap and take the police. This guy's insane. The like moment he's someone says boo, they run to the courts, run to the police, run to whoever they can to get protection. They haven't got the bollocks to stand up to anybody. I feel like I stood up. I didn't back down, did I? I asked them. They're the My favorite questions. thing out of the, these groups of people so far is Chile being the whole. Okay, so that's her legal advice is Discord. She goes there. Now, I'll give you a quick preview of what you're going to get on Monday right now. So I obviously am like, well, let's look into Andrew Johnson. Let's see what we can find on this. And I, I, I can't believe I never ran him through the court system before. Because, oh boy, does a bunch of shit come up. This guy's got a whole bunch of charges, as we're going to see. But, to give you a little preview of what we got here, let's check him out. So, these are all, this is, this is his current, uh, as you know, I was assaulted outside, uh, of Kate's arraignment. Uh, she spends a lot of time worrying about the personal lives of others while ironically judging other people's parenting skills. And she had two kids taken by DCF, as we all know. However, did you know that her thug boyfriend was criminally charged in February with assault and battery on a household member for a third time? He's been charged with this third time. This was right around the time of the storm. Well, well, which basically criticized me and said I was a bad father. And this is what you were doing. Well, you were calling me a bad father. The boyfriend you had was arrested and charged with assault and battery on a family member, specifically you. Let me read the police report here. I don't know if you guys can read this, but I'll read it to you if you can't. So it says as following, and this is just one of several court documents we're going to show in Monday's show. On February 9th, 2022, at approximately uh, 1 to 14 p.m., Officer Kaiser dispatched to the lobby of the North Attleboro Police Department for a report of a domestic argument in, um, for domestic. Upon arriving, I spoke with Catherine Peter who stated that her boyfriend, her boyfriend, not husband, boyfriend, Andrew Johnson, had a verbal argument in the bedroom at approximately 8 o'clock. At the end of the argument, Peter told Johnson to leave the home. Johnson got out of his bed in an aggressive manner, grabbed her with both hands on both of her arms, and slammed her against the wall in front of her son, Stephen, who, by the way, also this poor fucking kid, this poor fucking kid, I pray for him, had to witness her getting the shit kicked out of her by his father, Stephen Young. And DCF said, you need to get rid of Stephen Young. And instead of doing that, she went and had more two, two more kids with Stephen Young, who she eventually lost to the state. And then start, she dumps one junkie for another, Andrew Johnson. And DCF is like, you can't have him in the house. He's bad news too. And she doesn't. So she loses custody of them again and does not get them back fully until 2018. That's April 2018. She makes a Facebook post saying, I got custody of my kids back. This poor, poor child. Had to live in hot psychiatric hospitals because of the mental hell that this animal, that's what Kate Peter is. She's not a human. She's an animal. 
that she puts them through. If you're doing this to kids, you're evil. You're, you're evil to do this to children. But Peters told Johnson that he could be arrested for attacking her. And he laughed at her and then left the home. She decided to come to the station and report this after talking to her family's social worker, Kyle Ouellette. Social worker. Remember Kate said she doesn't have DCF in her life? Then why do you have a social worker? And by the way, I googled Kyle Ouellette. Let's see where he, Kyle Ouellette works. Take a wild guess where Kyle Ouellette works. Hmm. Let's see. Kyle Ouellette. Up. Oh, he works for DCF. He works for DCF. That's her DCF worker. Remember, DCF's not involved in her life. But for some reason, she has a DCF social worker dedicated to her on speed dial. But DCF is not in her life somehow. Sure thing, Kate. Sure thing. So it goes on to say, Catherine Peter was explained, Catherine Peter was explained their 209A right and decided to apply for the restraining order. And by the way, as we're going to see, she gets a full year order on him. February 9th, 2022. That has been less than a year. She has an active restraining order on this man and they came to court together. That's another charge on him. He's currently out on bail with this charge, along with the charge from three months before that, the really horrific one involving the child that we're going to get to Monday. He's out on bail. $5,000 cash bail for this. This is his third domestic. Third. One of which involved a knife and a child. Animals. And you're going to criticize my parenting because I masturbate? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You really have the audacity to do that. I cannot believe that. Oh, this is more than a bail violation. He's going to jail. Like the, like when the, like what you saw is the assault and battery. That that's a charge. You're not going to go to jail for that on your own. If you're out on bail for two domestics involving domestic violence and a, and a child and a knife, you're going to jail. But, oh, you know, extramural affairs. That's what people really care about. Eating got his nut off. That's the real problem here. Not domestic violence and damaging children. So, she has an order on him. There are no visible marks on her arms at this time. Interesting. Which also makes me wonder. I'm like, is, she, is this just like a guy... Is she abusing him? Ment I feel like he's retarded. You saw him in that video. He's retarded. He's a caveman. I feel like she abuses him mentally. And then the only thing he knows how to do is be like, Andrew mad. Andrew push you now. Andrew mad. Andrew not happy with you. You mean to Andrew. You take Andrew pills. Andrew smash you. Andrew smash you. But I feel like she gets him to that point. Like, why else is she with him? Why would you want to be with a guy that just beats the shit out of you and is a junkie? Tell me that. Makes no sense. And I, I have no doubt she hits him. No doubt. But he does, he's choosing to be there. So there's no visible marks on her arms at this time. Peter then left the station and go to Attleboro Courthouse. I was informed... That Sandra Bateman, the school counselor, filed a 51A by Ouellette, who stated that Young, the child, does not feel safe going back to the home. The child says he feels unsafe around Andrew Johnson. As soon as you hear that, the kid does not feel safe around Andrew Johnson. You, you get rid of Andrew Johnson permanently. You choose the child over Andrew Johnson. You never talk to Andrew Johnson again. That's what a responsible mother does. Not Kate, though. 
She brings him to court with her. That's what she does. I mean, can you believe this? So, Peter plans to go to the middle school to pick Young up after she gets the 209A, the order. And take him to work until she can find a safe living place or Johnson is arrested. Andrew Johnson has an open case from 9-28-2021. That's the one, that's the really horrifying one. That is the really horrifying one that we're going to talk about on Monday. For assault and battery. An assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Gets better. Domestic A and B on partner. Subsequent. Andrew Johnson intentionally touched a family member, K. Peter, who he lives with, however slight, without having any right or excuse to do so, and either caused physical harm or did so without the consent of the person he touched. Reason for subsequent offense. Andrew Johnson has a conviction for the same offense in Attleboro District Court on 425-18. And guess what? We're going to be talking about that one too. He has five, count them, five charges since 2016 for domestic violence. Five. Five. And she still lives with him. She still, he does work. He's a plumber. He's a plumber. He does work. I'm going to call him right now. I got his number. We're going to give me one sec. I'm calling him. Give me one sec. Kate's going to warn him. Don't. She, I know she's watching. Don't pick up the phone. Don't pick up the phone. I'm going to call him right now. Hopefully we can get him. Give me one sec. His number's on the court docs. Hope I didn't speak too soon. Oh, I'm sure she makes much more money than she does. I'm sure. But I'm looking. I'm looking at her no contact order right now. She is to stay 500 feet away from her, and yet there they are. Hold on. All right, we're doing it right now. We got his number. Calling him. Go on, answer. He's going to get real mad. Hello? Is Andrew Johnson there? You have the wrong number. I have the wrong number? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. This He has he has your number on court docs. Sorry. Oh, so he's putting the wrong number on court docs. Did I call the right one there? Yep. That is what is listed on his court documents. Interesting. Yeah, it says employer. 1A Plumbing. Might have to contact them. This is the warrant for his arrest that I'm looking at right now. So yeah, that is um, that is the crime this woman, this guy's being charged with. No, it's not him. Um, so how is she responding to this? Now, of course, she has not responded at all. I tagged her in it. She hasn't said anything. She does not want this attention. Well, you're going to get it, Kate. You're going to get it. You wanted attention? You wanted to, you know, you wanted to uh, fuck with my life and do all this shit. Now you got my attention, Kate. You got the attention of an award winning journalist. And like, yeah, like your fans say, like, why stream? Like all you got on here in the last two weeks is you fat pitches in the rain <coughs> and two other people who aren't you having a discussion. Cool content. So I commented on this. Video. Check in. Or what, did I comment on this one? Or did it comment on her community post? I used to like watching this channel, but this was an ambush. Go here. All the comments are negative. All the comments on there are negative. Let's see the community tab. Let's see.
So I go, are you going to talk about how you were arraigned for a crime today? And here's how she responds. She goes, do you have any comment about the judge warning you that if you followed me to my car again, that you'd be risking your liberty? Uh, The judge wasn't talking to me. The judge was actually talking to you because you're the one with an order on you, not me. You threw this entire case out the window. <laughs> like, like what? Like the judge is just going to, she, does she think this, that the judge is just throwing this out because a reporter asked her a question and was assaulted in the process and now are going to face your own consequences because you can't stop stalking me. No, Kate. No, Kate. That's not how any of this works, dear. With your high school diploma, that's not how any of this works. It's not stalking. It's asking questions. It's the media asking questions for a couple seconds. You drove away. That's it. Didn't touch it. Just ask. I wasn't harassing you. I was just asking you any comment on legal proceedings. Any comment? Nope. Stay tuned. She always says this. If I had a dime for every time she said, stay tuned, criminal charges coming. She says that because it sounds scary. And her idiot followers like, oh my God, kill shot. Kate's going to get him. Kill shot. And then. They remember the storm. We all supposed to stay tuned for the storm. Nothing happened. There was no storm. Nothing happened. But these retards, like they don't question. Like, wait a minute. I thought I thought we were, something was coming. The only thing that's coming is his dick. That like besides that, what's coming? I don't know. Andrew Mad. <laughs> oh, it's too good. The parody accounts are already here. <clears throat> um. So he goes on to say. She goes on to say, stay tuned. And weird that being body blocked by a man larger than you causes you to tremble and run to the police. Not a smart thing to say, Kate, to taunt a victim and say, oh, you're trembling and running to the police. You're mocking me for that? For sta- like, you know, getting justice? I guess you forgot my lawyer and officer of the court was there for the entire thing. Yes, with his back towards us. Um... And he attempted to remind you of the judges as well. You're incredibly done. Yes, I'm the dumb one here, Kate. Even I'm getting more likes on my comments than you are on your own channel. That says a lot, doesn't it? It says a lot. Oh, so I, okay. So I responded and I said, Kate, you weren't going to be charged. I go, I meant to say, you said you weren't going to be charged and you were. You said the order wasn't going to be granted and it was. You said I wouldn't show up to court, and I did. Your drugged out, abusive boyfriend assaulted me on film at your behest, and I attempted to interview you for my publication. Why would anyone believe you anything you say about future legal proceedings when you've been wrong about everything? And I go, the judge did not order the media to refrain from asking questions. That's a First Amendment violation. Your lawyer made an ass out of himself much like girl boss did because he said in court that the victim is my fiance. The Boston police department reviewed the tape and agreed. I was assaulted. Andrew is also out on bail on two other charges, including assault, assaulting your daughter with a knife. I've got the court docs and we're exposing them all Monday. Stay tuned. Yeah, I can stay tuned too. And then she goes, the judge warned you. You ignored the warning. My lawyer has handled this just fine. You're not the media. Why? Cause you said so. And you're going to get several fun surprises Monday. Again, if I had a dime for every time she told me I had a big surprise come, what are you going to do? Okay. More, more dick pics. Is that what you got? Big. Yeah. I have a real big surprise coming Monday. I got a surprise for you Monday. And I go, Kate, the judge didn't tell me to do anything. I go, do you have any comment on Andrew Johnson's or notice she hasn't answered the question here. Any comment on Andrew Johnson's arrest for assaulting you in February? The court docs say you have an order on him. Why was he with you at court if he assaulted you and is charged with assaulting your daughter with a knife? Why do you subject him to this violence? And she goes, he was with me because I called him to come with me to escort me because of your stalking. But you have an order on him. He can't do that. He can't do that. That's a violation of the order. So you ordered, you brought a guy with you to assault me. I mean, that's screenshot that motherfucker. I am, that's right there. That is an admittance. 
That is an admittance that she orchestrated the whole thing. I called him to escort me. There's it. You did it. You are grossly misrepresenting that report, and you know that. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm actually showing the report word for word. The damage your obsession with me does, and now, now we just changed the subject. She's like, well, what do you have to say about this really damning report? Oh, you're just misrepresenting it. Now back to you. The damage your obsession has done to my daughter is something those who love her have to deal with every day that I've done to your daughter. Honey, Kate, I call her honey, retired. Wait till you read what your husband, your fake husband did to your daughter. He cut her with a fucking knife and pinned her to the ground. Wait till you read this fucking report. It's going to blow your fucking mind. He's out on $5,000 cash bail. But I damaged your... Imagine saying that. I damaged your daughter. What did that guy do? What did that guy do? And you're, and you're okay with it. It's well documented. Oh, you love to say that. It's not though. What's documented is what I got. And your continued obsession with my daughter is going to result in a protective order to keep you away from her. I've never met your daughter, Kate. I have no desire to go anywhere near her, but Andrew Johnson should not be anywhere near her. And I don't think he's allowed near her, but it sounds like he lives with her. It sounds like he lives with her, which sounds like a violation of her safety and the, and an order. Yes. She's still with them. They were at fucking court together. I know it was a mistake. Um, she's not my honey. She's totally against the first amendment, right? The rights on totally. Like I'm their question. I'm, I'm, I, I, you saw the video. I wasn't harassing them. I wasn't cat calling her. I was asking her a relevant question about why she was in court. And I got assaulted for that. If that's not anti one, a, what is, what is, yeah. And again, he's used to pushing around women and they stop, but I don't stop. Chili says he don't stop. I don't ever stop. Never stop. I mean, this is insane. Yeah, he works for 1A Plumbing. Is that a legitimate company? We need to contact them immediately. We need to contact them. And as Kate making threats, thought she was a free speech advocate, people are saying, do you not have a protection order against them? People are just roasting her, her own followers. Bob sees in there, he goes, is the reason your boyfriend didn't want to be on camera during your New Year's Eve stream and you kept calling him Charlie? Because you are, that's so point, that's such a good point. During the, during the <laughs> First Amendment plumbers, uh, during the uh, New, New Year's stream there, she called him Charlie and he said he didn't want to be on camera because he's not allowed to be around her. But she's not with him. She just brought him to beat me up. Right. Popsy's comments are the best. He's great. No, no, no. We, of course I'm going to call his work. That's not real life. That's cancel culture. I embrace cancel culture. Everybody knows that. Your company, a company has a right to know if they're employing a man who is facing charges of cutting a girl with a knife. They have That can affect their bottom line. They have a right to know that. 51A plumbing. That's good. That's good. That's the only person she could find us. She has no other friends. What if, I mean, those, that guy from Australia or England or the South or wherever. Anyway. Um, yeah. It's like, dude, she has contacted members of my, I mean, have you seen the email that she sent to the mother of my children at her fucking work? Have you seen it? It's fucking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I got, let me find it. Uh, I have to look it up. I don't really feel like looking it up. Hold on.
Does anybody have it? I've sent it to some people. I never know how to find I have so many screenshots and pictures. I never know how to find shit. I'll have it ready. Unless somebody else has it lying around and they want to DM it to me. Hold on. Let me try one more keyword search. I don't know. I can't find it. If anyone else can find it, let me know. Oh, I think I found it. I think I got it. Okay, I got it. I I got it in a message to dump truck, actually. I'll bring it to you. Let's check this out. This is how, talk about don't go real world. Let's check this out. I got it. Yeah, remember that when she put up her... What was that on her hand then? Remember she put up her hand, I'm married. What was that? She got that at a uh, stop and shop. This is an email. Sent to a work email address. A work email address. And CC'd the, the, the work email address, by the way, is a school. And the principal was CC'd on this email. Your husband intercepts your mail, emails, social media, and goes through your phone to prevent you from finding out what literally tens of thousands of strangers online know right now. Why do you care what she knows? Like, what do you care? Why does that affect you at all? Whatever. Aiden has been cheating on you with multiple women. He meets through his weird online blog cult. His poker games with Keith were all lies, excuses to go out with mistresses and leave you and the children alone overnight. Like what? His two main mistresses have been Leah Genduso and Lauren Murray, but there are supposedly others, including a woman that we only know as Kimberly Lynn. Yeah, funny they never found out her name. Um, but by the way, this is Lauren Lee Laguna. I don't mean to pick on Lauren D, Lee, D Laguna, but when you say don't go real world, <laughs> nah, 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 we're going real world. Aiden uses images of your children in an attempt to get a false restraining order out on one of the many people he's harassed through his blog. He used those images of your children and wrote, I mean, imagine this, they're calling someone else as a bad parent. He put those threats all over the internet and now they're in court documents as well, whatever that means. You should also be aware that the information about your daughter being sent to school with COVID-19 and possibly affecting other children has leaked as well, which is a complete lie. In our group chat, which she has hold of now, I go, yeah, my daughter got tested positive for COVID. She's been in school all week. That's what fucking happens. You're like, you get sick. We test you. You have COVID. Now we know. Now we keep you home. Because we have to. Because you tested positive. Before that, we didn't know when we were sending you to school. And this retired is like, they contact, like, let's forget that, Lauren Laguna. I don't mean to pick on you. They contacted my daughter's school. An elementary school. To let them know that my child had COVID six months ago. And I'm not I'm not going real world. Imagine doing this while you're living with Andrew Johnson and that's taking place in your home. Like, like this is exactly right, Aaron, and this is what the magistrate doesn't understand. It's like, this is the kind of email you send when you're fucking someone, when you are the mistress. But we're not obviously fucking. <clears throat> so what is she doing? He goes, possibly infecting other children. 
There is leaked as well, as he was discussing in a Facebook group messenger chat, and some people have already expressed that they've reported or intend to report that to the school. I'm not going to attach anything graphic to this email, as it is your work email for school. And even if this were your personal email, I don't want to cause you unnecessary stress. She cares. She cares very much. Then why are you contacting her at all? And yes, they did, Lauren, number one, contact my parents. And my siblings, I would get CC'd on emails to them and they would be like, what is going on? What the fuck is the storm? And they don't ask any questions. They don't want to know. Their big thing is like, why am I being bothered with this right now during the middle of the day? No, Nobody cared. Nobody in my family cared because nobody cares about any of this. All of this stuff you're saying, nobody cares. It's like not, none of this is real. This is all just bullshit and lies and things that ultimately, yeah, am I, am I the best? I was not a good husband. Okay. I wasn't, yeah, we all get that, but nothing I did was horrific. Nothing or illegal. Unlike you who regularly does horrific, traumatizing things to children. We are not the same. We are not the same. She says there, it's a work email. I'm attaching police reports. So am I. Court doc exhibits regarding the threats Aiden wrote against your children and an application for a restraining order written. By the way, Kate, the, the, in case you're watching. So we spoke, obviously we got this email. She's obviously like, what the fuck? Why is my work, e my, my principal? I, I, I have the principal on school dot, speed dial. We've had many, you're not the first ratchet to try to contact them. I contact them and they go, basically, if she contacts us again, we are filing an order on her. We're getting an order on her. So go ahead. Try to contact them again. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. You're going to jail. Like, you can't just keep doing that. Uh, don't go real world, though. Right. Sure. Right. That's what it comes down to. Adults don't care. Period. Um, I'm attaching police reports, court exhibits regarding the threats he wrote. And an application for a restraining order written by Aiden that fully corroborates what's going on here. I've CC'd your principal in the case that your husband is intercepting your work emails as well. How the fuck would I do that? Feel free to reach out outside of your work email if you would like to see anything else regarding this. No, she doesn't want to talk to you, Kate. She think she knows who you are. She doesn't want to be involved in any of this. She's disgusted by you as any decent person is. And if you contact her again, she's going to get an order on you. How many people you need to get orders on you? You can't just keep bothering people. You can't do this. Nobody cares. Just because you care doesn't mean other people care. Feel free to reach out. Nope. There is a lot and it's not safe for work, aka the jerk off videos or otherwise kind of upsetting. None of this may matter to you at all. Correct. And you may be fine with being... Let's see what she got here. It's almost done. <coughs> and you may be fine. <clears throat> with being treated like this, like what? If so, that's totally fine in your business. And I will be praying for you and your children's mental health. And my kids are fine. We're good. Trust me. But Imagine saying, I'll be praying for your kids mental. Imagine that. Imagine saying that I will pray for your kids mental health. When you regularly subject your children to domestic violence and getting cut with knives constantly. And you're going to pray for the mental. Your son was in a fucking mental hospital, okay, because of you. You did that. Oh, no, talk about my kids. I'm not talking about kids. I'm talking about you. You did it. You did that to him. Like, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Either way, you deserve to know. Oh, trust me, she knows. And for months, many of us have been trying to give you a heads up behind his back. No one cares. But he continues to talk about everything that he's been doing to make sure you never see any of it. Please keep my name out of this, though. She didn't. She didn't. 
He is making threats to so many people online right now. He scares a lot of people. Oh, she loves to play the victim. I can't even send the messages I've seen that he's sending to people to scare them, mostly women, because this is a school email. So don't go real world. Nah. P pass. Pass. Okay. So um, you could, exactly. Like your kid just saw that. That was sent, that email was sent in, I believe, March, a month after the incident, a month afterwards, a month. And that's what it came down to. She thought her, she thought that they were going to join forces together, but what she doesn't understand is nobody want, nobody cares. Literally no one cares. If no one in my family cares, then why do you care? Nobody cares. Yeah, remember when she was a woman's rights? <laughs> yeah, remember those days? Right, right. All right, anybody have any questions they want to ask me? If you thought this was interesting, wait till you see Monday's show, baby. Wait till you see Exposing Andrew Johnson. You're not going to want to miss Monday's show. It's going to be lit. Kate's going to try to downplay it and make sure her followers don't know about it. But feel free to spread the word. Go over, I mean, actually, I'm encouraging y'all right now. Go over to her channel and don't threaten or anything like that. But in the comments, just ask her. Everybody go in the comments of her most recent community post. I will put the link in it right now. And everybody just go ask about that order. Why do you have an order out on Andrew Johnson? Do you have any comment on Andrew Johnson? threatening to you and your son saying that he feels unsafe or he doesn't want to be around him. Why do you bring this man around that your son is scared of? Ask her. Ask her. Let her followers see that. That there is an army of people here who will stand up for children that will not put up with this shit. Okay. Anybody have any questions they want to ask me before we call it a night? Let me check the turtle chat one more time. Nothing there. That's cool. Still love y'all. Anybody have any questions? Fire away. If not, we'll call it a night. Ah, Kate's here. Hi, Kate. There she is. Does Andrew Johnson have uh, charges prior to the recent stuff? Andrew Johnson has been charged with eight crimes in Attleboro District Court. He has been convicted. He had a conviction in 2018. And he had court on December 30th for the charge with her daughter. A jury selection date on December, th seven days ago, that happened. Do I think the Pats are going to win tomorrow? Yes, I do. But I don't think so, really. But the only thing we got going for us is they didn't practice. That's all I got going for us. Um, you can get thinking get in and wash his husband. Yeah, that would be funny. Will you be donating a kidney to Brian Richard? Yeah, I saw that. Imagine how sad you have to be if you have to go on Twitter and ask for a kidney. It couldn't happen to a worse person. Hey, Brian, how's your kidney doing? Mine's fine. I, my, my kidney's good. I don't have to e-bag for a kid. When you, you, you know, you're a shitty person when you have to go on Twitter and ask for a kidney and then no one responds for months. That's the best. She needs to pray for her own kids. I will. I will say, I'm going to church tomorrow and I will say a prayer for them. So um, we are going to get in touch with DCF over that. We're going to get in touch with DCF over him being in court with her at all. When they find out about that, those kids need to be removed from the home. They are unsafe there. They have said so. And by the way, your daughter, Kate, I have no intention of approaching her. However, if Teresa is watching this, I'm just going to put this out there. This is your safe space, dear. You are a minor. We've had children your age, 16-year-old girls, who live in abusive homes, particularly Ashley St. Angelo's 16-year-old daughter, who have run away from home multiple times because it's unsafe. This is your safe space. If you ever want to reach out to me to talk about what you've experienced in your home, I'm here to protect you. Turtleboysports at gmail.com. If you want to expose Andrew Johnson 
or your mother for the abuse that they've put you through, you're welcome to come on here whenever you want. Turtle Boy Sports. Yeah, Eddie Hancock's daughter too. Remember? Because that, what an awesome girl that was, huh? Because that, back in the day from Weymouth, with that shitbag father, Ed Hancock, she came on here. This was her safe space. I will protect you from the monsters. Because that's what you, you live with a monster. You shouldn't have to do that. You deserve better than that. Yeah, Brett was embarrassed in court. <laughs> I saw that. Dude, they played the tape on some like menthol smoking chicks channel. I don't even know her name. I saw it on Brett's. Um, and in the tape, he's like, Your Honor, I don't think it's fair. I just don't think it's fair that uh, she has a lawyer and I don't. It's like a disadvantage. It's like, well, why don't you have a lawyer, Brett? And I'm in the comments asking, like, why doesn't Brett have a lawyer? Does he not have money or something? I mean, he's a, he works, right? He has a job. Why doesn't he have money? Why doesn't he have a lawyer? And they would just block me. They just blocked me because they don't, they know it's true. Like these people, once you confront them for who they are, they got nothing to say. And by the way, and then they just talked about, oh, jerk off videos, kids in the tub and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, that's all you got. You just made up shit. Like this actually happened. He lost. You celebrated it out. Funny story. Christine is absolutely right. So she was in the discord. We, we ever, all my turtle eyes were all in the discord. Kate. And when the, when the breakup initially happened, she told Christina here, who's a very nice person, that I was planning on blogging about her, being a ratchet or some shit. Going to dig into her past and bring all this shit up. And she messaged me very concerned. And she's like, if this is true, I'm out. And I would agree with her if I actually said that. And I go, I did not say that. And I showed screenshots of our conversation in which the exact opposite happened. Kate was like, oh, this girl's a ratchet. I don't know what she had against you, but she's like, this girl's a ratchet. And I go, we're not blogging about her. We're not blogging about our followers. Like, we're not digging. Like, we're not, that's not what we do. We don't dig into people's past. And like, she's not a bad person. Stop it. And she figured it out. And she realized who Kate was right away. Some people don't do that. Some people don't do that. <clears throat> No, I've not. I'm looking into it, though. The Gaffney model thing is on my list of things to write about. No, I'm totally offering mental help. Her daughter is 16, whatever now. She's welcome on here whenever she wants. I don't know what the deal is with her. But to me, she's a victim. And she's an abuse victim. And she needs a place to feel safe. She constantly runs away from home. She needs a place to be feel safe. This is her spot. Turtleboysports at gmail.com. It wasn't that. I mean, it wasn't a big deal. It was just a smart, it was dismissed. It's stupid. <clears throat> okay. Took me a while. Took it takes some people a while, you know? Because I keep in mind, I'm the one that sold her to you people. I'm the one, and you trusted me, right? That was one of my greatest failures. Was telling you that you should trust this woman. She's legit. Right. She's Bristol. She's kill shot Kate. She's great. You know, and I thought she was legit too. And y'all trusted me. And when the split happened, it was like, you, you, you trusted me too much. And then you believed her. It was amazing. It was amazing. So, um, yeah. Um, what the hell? by the way, you know, what's coming is, uh, the breakup with, with Shannon and Kate. I can't wait for the breakup. It's going to be dope. It's going to be hilarious. So check out these filters on this fat broad on dump truck. Dump truck. Dump truck. <coughs> so Kate has not been doing any shows, but dump truck has. Dump truck's been doing some videos. That's it. Dude, look at this. Look at like, who does like, watch hey guys, this. I've gotten a lot of messages asking me, to make more content. <laughs> it's difficult because I don't know my place on the internet or in the world, really. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Comment down below what you think I should make content on, and I guess we'll see how it goes. Stay smart and be good. Oh my God. I've never seen so many filters. And you see what's happening here, right? We all see what's about to happen. 
we know how this story ends. Does this sound familiar? One person with a platform brings another person on board and kind of makes them their number two. And then number two gets their own channel and starts making content and has like a following and people, how does this story end? How does this story end? Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen this one before, but they, I'm sure they're, they, they're both stable women. And I'm sure that this won't end badly or anything like that. Like you, you want to see the worst filter you've ever seen? Oh, this is, hold on. Road is narrow. Uh, I guess she got rid of it. There was some video of her with the worst filter I've ever seen. The worst filter I've ever seen. I'm getting a text with the number. What is this number you're sending me? Let's see. Is that his number? What's that number that you sent me there? DZ? <coughs> anyway. I think we know how, I can't wait for it. It's going to be great. I mean, it's like Brett and Amanda. It's like, we all knew how that was going to end, wasn't it? You can't have these people with these personalities like this together. It ain't going to work. Ain't going to work. Yeah. Very stable. Very stable. They're all mentally ill. I, mean, I don't want to give. A, yeah, he is very wealthy. Brian, Brian Ritchie is not even worth talking about because he wins when you talk about him. It's true. The dump trunk filter is worth a lot of money. You saw what she looked like on New Year's Eve. Her face is a paper plate. I've never seen anything so circular. It looks like the moon. There was a literal, yeah, exactly what they look like. like. Yeah. Shaddix having Kirk on his podcast tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I was on Kirk's show twice this week, actually. I was on there Tuesday <coughs> and again on uh, yesterday to the tribute to Jon Stewart. Great guy. All right. Uh, I asked, yeah, enjoy asking random people. About you. Do you know Aiden? Yep. Do you know Turtle Boy? Yep. Do you like him? Yeah. Do, oops. Oops. Yo, you, you notice how Irish Demon just disappeared? The second I was like, hey, you got any? Uh, oh, yeah. I taped your conversation. We got the recording. Yeah, where is it? It's been two months now, my dude. Where is it? And are you still standing by C Krusty Panties after what you saw there in that police report? I know. I know. I know. You got screenshots of me talking about kids in the tub or something and I'm the bad guy. Yeah, okay. But what about her? You cool with that? Uh, I didn't upload it, but it's on Kirk's podcast. Would love to listen to the full story. Um, that, I mean, it was just, that was the full story, which you heard. Monday night at nine is Andrew Johnson being exposed. I don't know what a recording is. Uh, guess what? It didn't happen. I would know if there was a recording. He took a little picture of me at the bar, and that's it. Do I think Billy Tibbetts killed her? That's Where was Billy Tibbetts that night? That's a good question. Was he? Yeah, he was going to make me. I, I offered him five grand for that tape. Never, ha never had it. Never had it. Where's the recording, Irish Dildo? <coughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so I do have a major media appearance coming up uh, November, uh, I apologize, January 27th. That's all I'm going to say. Something big's coming January 27th. I will not tell you what it is. You will have to see. I will not say anything because I know what's going to happen. Oh, I got a cash app? Hold on. Oh, I do have a cash app from 7-Pounder. For Harry Acosta, Harvey Acosta is a bitch. There you go. 10 bucks. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Howie and Grace are going to destroy Trump. Yeah, it's going to be funny. 
Money's going to be great. Yeah. Trust me. On November, for all these people, Turtle Boy's dead. Wait till January 27th. Okay? Put it that way. Nothing more needs to be said. Why am I not announcing it? Because I like secrets. And I also don't need retires to start contacting people and trying to... We're not doing that. You're just going to get a surprise on that day. It's going to blow your mind. Let's just put it that way. Think big. Think real big. Real big. All right. Anybody else got any questions? Anybody else have any questions or anything? You got me. You got me. Just remember who one of my heroes is. Put it that way. Oh, I said too much. Not saying anything. I didn't say that. Would you have Kirk on? Yeah, I invited him on. He said he'd come on whenever. And we will have Kirk on one time for sure. Definitely. Kirk would come on too. It would be fun. Court dates this week. We got Chrissy. Uh, trial starts on Tuesday. On Friday, I'm going to be in Boston with my guy, Billboard Chris. Friday, I am going to be in Boston all day, and we are going to be confronting Michelle Wu. So, again, all these people that want to punch me in the face, let me put it out there right now for the world. I will be in Boston with Billboard Chris, who you can follow on Twitter to see where we're at, on Friday. And we will be protesting the ge the general mutilation of children and Michelle Wu. Yeah, I like John. John's a great guy. Mike Pence. <coughs> um, no, I would not consider fathering a child. She would. I'm not her type. Trust me. Billboard Chris is one. He's been on my show before, but we get to meet in real life. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to meet him. All right, guys. So I guess we're going to call it a night. It's been a long show. Thank you for all the donos. Thank you all for all the support, folks. Um, and we will see you guys all Monday night at 9 p.m. You're not going to want to miss it. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be dope. So uh, we'll see you then. Peace, Turtle Riders. Smash that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and leave a comment afterwards. Bye.